what is going on, everybody? We got some echo. Hold on. They're always trying to play your boy, but hey, we're here. We got the 2021 CFL draft getting ready to go. We got about what six minutes until the CFL draft starts. It's your boy Stavros Katzentonis, defensive back for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I thought, you know what? Last year you guys got to watch the CFL draft in my perspective of getting drafted. So I was like, you know what? So many people watched. I got to do this again and I got to do it a little bit bigger. So we're back for this year's 2021 CFL draft. It's going to be super fun. We will let the main commentators do their thing, but you know your boy will be making a little bit of appearance here and there, talking, letting you guys know what I think about all the picks. It's going to be super fun. I'm super excited to share all this with y'all. We got people in here from all around the world watching today, and it's going to be awesome. So we got about five minutes. In about three minutes here, we're going to start with the American National Anthem, followed by our great Canadian National Anthem to kick off the CFL draft. And by that time, it's gonna be time for that first number one pick. So let me know in the chat who you guys think is gonna be the number one overall pick. We're gonna have a good time today. Let me know where you guys are coming from, who your favorite CFL team is, and who your favorite CFL player of all time is as well. Let's just get the chat going, it's gonna be fun. We got Fear the Conspiracy in here. Alex Keller, Crumbs, how you guys doing? We're going to have a great time. If you guys are seeing this for the first time, you're searching CFL Draft on YouTube, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Ring the post notifications bell for everything football from me. Love to share everything with you guys about my story, everything that I know about football and that I've learned to this point, and just give them back at the end of the day. So, again, we got the 2021 CFL Draft getting ready to start. We're about two minutes out from playing the American National Anthem, and then we will get into the Canadian National Anthem. Crumbs, how's the mic going? Crumbs is one of my moderators. He's going to let me know how my mic's sounding. Let me see if I can make him the mod. Let's see. Come on, Crumbs. You got to do your job, man. You're the moderator. We're almost ready to start here. In fact, we're going to get it going. We're gonna get it going with the national anthem. So let's do this thing. We're starting off with the American flag. Then we will follow with the Canadian anthem. Everyone get on your feet. And here we go. Here we go. Get on your feet. I'll let you know my predictions next. Now presenting the Star Spangled Banner. Here we go. Our home and native land. Sing it with me, y'all. In the chat.
pandemic this summer. An August 5th start, a 14-game sked, and a more guys to have a chance to, to make an impact in the Canadian Football League with their athleticism. He is a special athlete. An absolute physical. <laughs> These talented prospects are looking forward. Forward to football. Forward to fun. Forward to the day we come together again in our stadiums. And that day is coming. This... Welcome to our coverage of the CFL Draft 2021. Rod Smith along with Wayne Ford in studio and joined Remote Football League for now. But adding to that, Farhan, the fact that this is, in effect, the second draft since the last time the league played because there was no season in 2020. So bigger rookie class coming up. How could that affect general managers' uh, decisions this time around? Yeah, I think there's a number of variables to play into this. And you remember, you mentioned right there the double cohort, right? You've got last year's rookie class that didn't get to get to a training camp. And then you've got this year's rookie class. But on top of that, at the NCAA, every player was given a free year of eligibility. So, so many of them are going back. That actually affected the NFL draft class as well, which was about 40% smaller than usual. Then you've got the U Sports group that didn't wind up playing. So many of those wound up deferring their draft year, coupled with the fact that if you have those two rookie classes, you don't want to sign all all of those players because you don't know where they're going to fit in terms of how they're going to be classified during uncertainty all that uh, but what's uh what there's no uncertainty about is the talent that we're seeing whether it's the NCAA guys the U sport guys who didn't play this year when I flip on the film this is the most talented group and it's just getting we said the same thing last year it's just getting better and better every year so what's going to happen there's the NFL guys there's guys going back one thing we do know is there's a whole lot of talent and where you want to where they fit into your roster whether it's this year whether it's two years down the road that's the biggest question that these evaluators and coaches have to figure out. And Chez, it's different this year in another way too. The draft order, because there was no season last year, uh, it was a random draft. I mean, usually you base it on worst to first the year before. So randomly drawn and it'll be a snake draft from there. So Hamilton draws first spot, followed by Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, BC, Edmonton, Ottawa, Toronto, Calgary. And Montreal's first rounder belongs to the Ticats. They get another uh, another remnant of the Johnny Manziel trade three years ago, and then the Alouettes at 10 as it snakes back the other way. It's a pleasure to be joined once again in studio by the league commissioner, Randy Ambrosi, who will announce the picks throughout the show. By the way, the second overall pick in the CFL draft back in 1985. Commissioner, welcome. What's this night mean to you? Well, Rod, let me start by saying it is great to be here and talking about football tonight. And... Uh, you know, what does it mean, Rod? I think the word that comes to mind is opportunity. You know, first, it, uh, the opportunity for these young players who have worked their guts out and put a, a lifetime of effort into being the best they can be. And, you know, tonight themselves and their families and teammates and friends, uh, coaches, everyone who has supported them, you know, is standing with them as they have an opportunity to hear their name called. You know, opportunity for the teams. Uh, you know, it's a chance for them to get better, find their future stars, and I know the teams are really excited. And then finally, an opportunity for the fans because we are talking about football and we're all excited to be getting back on the field in August, uh, uh, you know, this summer and, and playing some great CFL football. And, and with that, Rod, I have the opportunity to now uh, and, and honor to open the CFL draft. The 2021 CFL draft is now officially open. Hamilton, you are on the clock. Commissioner Randy Ambrosi, thank Guys, you. we're working, trying to get this. They're, they're trying to keep us out. This first but we're going to figure it out. Stand by. Last year, Stick with the audio. They, listen uh, into it. And we'll get twice. it fixed. They took Guelph offensive lineman Coulter Wood Manzi and defensive lineman Mason Bennett out of North Dakota. So I wonder now, Farhan, what do you think's on the Ticats' minds to start this draft? 
Well, I think there's a couple of position needs they would like to address. And you saw they took Mason Bennett last year. He's more of an edge player out of uh, North Dakota. I think they would, if they could, try to address the defensive tackle spot as well to get somebody to back up Ted LeRon. But there's nobody obviously available that can come in this year. Most of the high-end defensive linemen aren't going to be available. Those guys are going to wind up going back to school. And then receiver, you saw in 2018, they drafted Mark Chapman, who's never played a game in the Canadian Football League. I think they've been trying to get that position right for a while. They took uh, Tyler Tarnowski recently and you know you've got David Ungerer there you've got Marcus Davis an explosive player out of UBC some smaller receivers so I think when you look at some potential players at receiver I think that might be an area and then they also lost Nick Shorthill to free agency as well so potentially a backup linebacker uh, some type of uh, player that could also help them out in special teams but I think receiver is one they've been trying to get right for some time now Canadian receiver uh, we've talked so much in in this draft about the role of the futures and so many teams looking to the future, but I'm not necessarily sure that that's the way the Ticats want to go with the first pick. Now, there are some guys readily available. I know Terrell Janna out of the University of Virginia is a guy who's been mentioned a lot as a potential first overall pick because he's a guy who's going to be able to come into camp right away. He's a multiple year starter the, for the Cavaliers, uh, not quite as balanced an offense, and he paid a little bit of a price for that. But that may be affecting his NFL opportunities, I think. is That will be it. And also, offensive line, trying to get some, some depth. They're, they're getting, they're older there, trying to find some young talent at offensive line as well. So those will be the two places, wide receiver, offensive line, that a team that's absolutely loaded could use a little bit of help. Yeah, so as mentioned, Chaz, so they take an old lineman and a D lineman in round one last year. So I hear you guys talking about Terrell Janna and not many receivers uh, on the board. Who will Hamilton take? The start, the draft, the opening round. We're about to find out right after this. You're watching the 2021 CFL Draft on TSN. There's a ratio of the Canadian Football League. Oh, what a catch! Did you see that? Did you see that? Erlington. He was an eighth rounder, 66th overall. Big fella. Patriots practice roster again he was talked about by a number of teams last year as a guy who would qualify as Canadian for the draft didn't do the paperwork last season with those NFL opportunities but did it this year it has paid off and certainly a big opportunity for him and adding some size to that Hamilton receiving core guys yeah, and talking to Sean Burke, I think he really appreciates that he's got a pro background already. And I think you can draw the comparison to Alex Singleton, who spent some time in the NFL before getting eligible for the CFL draft and then coming back in and was able to make an impact. They like Burt's receiving skills. Look, they think he can be a tremendous blocker for them, both from a backfield position and as an endline type guy, along with downfield. But this is a guy that ran a 4.4840, so they do think he can get the ball down the field or move down the field. He's got some agility, and he can add to their receiving game as well. So 
this guy does a number of things. He's a tremendous athlete. At one point during his high school career, he was the number one ranked volleyball player in the entire United States in high school. He was also a high school quarterback, so he brings some versatility to that team, that offense. Tight end. We had a chance Welcome to, to the hammer, Jake. Week. This guy is jacked about coming to Canada. We're he's gonna be there. Canada since Hamilton, the start of his high 2021. School career, he's got a lot of family here. He's got brothers who live in Canada, grandparents who live in Canada. This guy's gonna raise the flag and carry it quite proudly. Yeah, this is a tight end. We're talking about the CFL right now in a tight end and why a tight end is a good play. Let's rewind 2019 Grey Cup, guys, and what did Winnipeg do to Hamilton? They got after their butts. Now, how good would it be and how much does Tommy Condell love the fact that he can now possibly bring a tight end in there for protection reasons, obviously he can release, just gives options to a, a guy in Tommy Condell offensively who likes to do a lot of different things. And this right here is just, it's just the evolution of this offense. Guy who, like you said, NFL ready, that's huge. And options for an offense that I think is already loaded. But this is, this is a great piece for that puzzle. So Jake Burt going first overall in the Canadian Football League draft. And we're going to move on to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders now as you Rough look Riders at on the, the clock. Canadian content there and their projected starters of course veterans on the offensive line and uh, and backups as well as you might expect in a, on a CFL team uh, very good with uh, Canadians there but uh, uh, Farhan uh, where would you say the Riders needs are heading into this draft? Well, look, they were able to get Evan Johnson this offseason, so that allowed their offensive line to get a little bit younger. But you've also got Labatt and Clark, who are getting older, so you could always look there. This team lost Zach Evans a year ago. Now, they think Mac Henry is going to be able to replace him and, and give them some, some positive snaps there. But I also look in the secondary, because if you look at the possibility of starting two Canadians in the secondary in Edom and Buka, you need to give yourself some backups. And as far as potential guys who could be here right away, you look at a guy like Nelson Lacombo, who played down the road at the University of Saskatchewan, who uh, did some really good things for them. He was the Defensive Player of the Year in U Sports in 2019. That's a possibility. And, and offensive line, always, because there's going to be some guys coming out of Canada West that will be available right away. There's always guys yeah, coming out of Canada you, you West. Look far always. That <laughs> offensive line group, and you talk about guys from Canada Come West, on. a group from the University of Calgary. Uh, Tyler Packer, you've got Logan Bandy, who's been very highly regarded. Peter Nicastro, an interior offensive lineman at, at the UFC, whose stock has been climbing very quickly. So certainly those are, are guys who will be considered. You talked about that defensive tackle position. Yeah, ideally they'd love to add some depth, but again, it seems like that is not a position of depth here and not a position of, of immediate availability when you, you look at the, the prospects in this draft. Um, and I like the direction you're going. Nelson Lacombo, a, a U of S guy, continuing to wear green and white would, uh, would certainly make some sense and be a, a great fit in adding to that, that depth and giving them that ratio flexibility, Ches. Yeah, if you lose over the last couple of years, you lose Cam Judge, you lose Zach Evans. Those guys, both ratio-breaking guys. And I'm with you guys. Nelson Lacombo seems like the fit here. He's, he's going to go in the first Combo's few picks. A baller. I can see this being a fit for them. Uh, ratio-breaking guy. You already have Eli Buka, who I believe they'll want to start at the corner after they lose after they lose Cam Judge. You have uh, a safety in, eight, in Mike Edom. Uh, this looks like the fit for me, but let's see where they go. They only had one pick in the first three rounds a year ago. They took it on an offensive lineman, uh, Matlin Riley. So one pick is in the books done by Hamilton taking Jake Burt. Who will the Saskatchewan Rough Riders take second overall? You're watching the CFL Draft on TSN.
2021 CFL Draft, along with our insider Dave Davis, answering some questions tonight as to what Canadian players are going to be chosen. Dave, the bigger question: When will the CFL play again? The plan is a 14 game. When will we play again? Returning. We're going to do it. It's going to be August. Y'all better well, be ready. A number of things the league I, has I'm to ready. have I'm before they hard. can stage games, and one of them is getting all six provinces it's be a good where season. CFL teams play to sign off on their return to play protocol. That's just the health and safety guidelines that would go towards staging practices, games, those kinds of things. And all six provinces have now either verbally or in writing approved the league's protocol, including pro the province of Ontario most recently. It supports it in principle, but they want each of the municipalities of Hamilton, Toronto, and Ottawa to give this their approval as well. They also will support the league in the next step, which is taking a proposal to the Public Health Authority of Canada, which is the agency that manages the border issues. The next thing the league has to look at is trying to get a seven-day quarantine approval Gotta get me across the border, though. Come in for the start of a season. <laughs> we this gotta figure that out. The National Hockey League got for the start of its season. So that is the next step that we expect to happen in the next week or so. And then the final step would be approval for fans in stands. And the directions that governments have given the league on this issue is ask us as late as possible because the governments, the more data they have, the more information they have, the more uh, knowledge of where the vaccine rollout is, the more likely they will be able to give the league a positive indication. Now that, as late as possible, is likely to come in about the middle of June for an August 5th start that governments, they hope, will be able to give the league some indication that they can plan to start opening a percentage of stadiums by that first week in August. Our insider, Dave Naylor, thank you as we look at the Dave, first round picks of the last Dave, five years. When I'm done with my career, I'm not going to be like you. I need to be that insider. In three of the past five, <laughs> including, as mentioned before, Madeline Riley uh, from the Saskatchewan Huskies a year ago. Dakota Shepley is gone. To Shepley, the NFL that's my boy, Dakota Cameron NFL. Judge, uh, now San Francisco 49ers. Argonauts. And here's the commissioner Baller. once again as we find out who Saskatchewan There we go, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Ambrosi. Who do we got number two the for the Rough Riders? In the 2021 CFL draft. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders select Nelson Lacombo. Nelson Lacombo. Back, Saskatchewan. Staying in the pain, green you are on and the white. Clock. Wow. Ooh, Congrats, Nelson. The Saskatchewan Huskies. Baller, DB. Riley, Dwayne, He's like me, 5'10", 180. Yeah, obviously these guys will be very comfortable remaining in green and white. Nelson 23 and a half tackles. Uh, a great pick. Four Not interceptions. His brother Bull, a linebacker with the BC Lions CFL veteran. Four, Nelson six, six. is mm, a, a yard dash. defensive back. The top defensive player in Canadian University football in 2019. A guy who might have lost out on an NFL opportunity because of the the seat oh, he's got some highlights because of U sports not okay fill the gap due to COVID, but he was still a selection to to play in the the shrine bowl had they played that game one of the canadian representatives evan foster said i played game. him in college His okay coach evan versus saskatchewan scott can west guy evan is one of the most legit skilled players he has ever seen in can canadian west university football the toughest great conference great quickness the canada great west on the football a guy who's versatile and can probably play multiple spots in your secondary farhan yeah, and that's exactly what Craig Dickinson has to say about this as well. First of all, he called him a very high-character player, but the fact that he can play and compete at multiple positions in the secondary. He was the number one ranked DB on their board as far as guys who could come in and play right away. And the one thing with Nelson, you know, he's played a number of positions. When he first came in as a freshman, he played at the field corner, and then eventually they moved him to what generally is considered the most important position in a secondary, and that is that boundary halfback spot. Now, where is he going to play in the CFL? They're going to give him a chance to compete at both spots because, like I said, the Riders might wind up starting two Canadians in the secondary. They've done a great job this offseason of adding that linebacker type of body to help them on special teams given they've lost you know a cam judge type of player but they need some depth in the secondary if they're going to start two canadians he likely gets a chance to play at the field corner first but they will give him a look at the safety spot and when this kid gets his hands on the ball look i've seen him play way back in high school at wj mode in abbotsford he's a threat to go the distance all the time four interceptions this past season almost Ooh. 200 receiver return yards and they 200 also some. He's 200 three quarterback sacks this past season or in 2019 and three Three sacks? Oh, my US. goodness. So this guy's a versatile player. One rival defensive coordinator told me the burst he has coming out of breaks. Were they three sacks on Michael O'Connor, though? Hash in the blink of an I mean, eye. Come on. As good as come on. I, hey, congrats. But was it was it on Michael O'Connor? I don't Nelson think so. Nelson Lacombo <laughs> is a player, no doubt. Dwayne, I agree with you. This year, if they played, I think he gets a shot down south. He's, he's that good, and he can play. Look, anybody who thinks that because... He's Canadian, or he's playing in U Sport, and he's a cover guy, but he can't cover in the CFL. 
You're just flat out wrong. This kid could play. I think he wrong. could play halfback. He could play corner. Oh, yeah. Or he could be your safety. I, I talked to Paul Waldo, a former teammate of mine in Montreal, and he coaches Zach up there. Zach Hayes says, waiting for my buddy Tyler he Packer said, well, to go. Hey, Tyler Packer, let's get him. Years old. He turned to Scott Flory and said, this guy could play in the CFL. Or he'd go to a CFL camp right now at a high school and not look out of place. He's, he's that good. He also went on to say, describing him, he said, He's just different, and that's what I saw when I look at the film. He's a playmaker. He's aggressive. He's got instincts. He tackles. He's got great hips. I love Nelson the Combo. He's he's a player. Got to have great player. hips as and a DB. One of the first Come on. Recruits of the Hall of Famer Scott Flory, the head coach of the University of Saskatchewan, uh, taking Nelson the Combo uh, out of. Abbotsford and now Nelson Lacombo stays in Saskatchewan. The Blue Bombers Riders. are on the board, y'all. Who are they going to the, take? Uh, still defending Grey Cup champions, Winnipeg. Their last five years, the Bombers had no first rounder a year ago because they had given it to the Argos for Zach Caleros. That seemed to pay off nicely. Uh, so did their two first rounders a year before, Drew Desjardins and Jonathan Congo. Both made significant contributions as rookies on the championship team. But uh, like the Riders, Farhan, Winnipeg didn't get much early a year ago, only one pick in in the first 36 so are they looking for the present instead of the future in this draft here at this pick well when you look at the bombers i mean i i gave kyle walters my unofficial gm of the year for the offseason just because of the work he was able to get done all that heavy lifting he did to get all of his key contributors including key canadians signed from the team that won the great cup in 2019 now the one contributor as far as a key canadian goes is la combo he wasn't really a factor sorry not la combo but jonathan Combo, who was a factor late in the season and certainly in the great cup but in terms of getting a rotational defensive lineman that can come in and play right away i'm not sure that guy necessarily exists this year so if there's one team that could potentially go out and get a future it is probably the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You saw Lacombo come off the board. Who's that next DB? Is there a guy that can come in and work with the Hallett brothers to potentially hmm. provide some backups? And Who's some that next DB? Secondary? Could probably have been me, this but I'm, I'm taking lockdown. Ty Cats, Oski Wee Wee, Oski Wah Wah. Come on now. Makes a lot of sense Holy Mackinac, Tiger Cats, eat them raw. Let's go. It's an interesting group to, to look at this Winnipeg roster. I agree with you 100%. Since Kyle Walters took over at this, as this team's general manager, a lot of fantastic moves. But the number one thing that Kyle Walters has done is he has really solidified their Canadian talent. And, and we saw the, the fruits of that at the end of 2019 with a, with a Grey Cup champion championship team obviously he and mike o'shea would be two guys who would a appreciate a great canadian talent base uh, i look at their roster and the thing i see is what farhan alluded to with jonathan Kongbo gone um jake thomas getting a little bit older that they might look to to add something to that defensive line group a little bit of little bit of depth whether it is in terms of immediate help or whether it's future help there are guys out there i mean one of them that would be intriguing and ironic daniel joseph at uh, at north carolina state as he is the younger brother they're talking about Faith him in Calcutty, the chat who chat Winnipeg says daniel joseph overall pick in 2017. yeah if this is a right now selection a guy they want to come in to play day one i think they go defensive line if it's a future though and, and we said it uh all, all night already in this early evening. There's, this is the best DB class we've seen in a long time. Kyle Walters, a former defensive back himself, he's, he's got to be looking at some of these guys and thinking, okay, I'm going to have to wait a year or two, but uh, I get my hands on these guys. So if they want a right now player, it's a D lineman uh, or it's a defensive back. We don't need to They're saying Reddit Cramdy. Reddit Cramdy. DB again, Montreal, I've seen his film. He's a hitter. Let's see, is it Reddit? Is third it Reddit? In the 2021 CFL draft, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers select Liam Dobson. Liam Open Dobson. Lyman, Ooh. Maine. BC, First hoggy. You are on the clock. Liam o Dobson, out of Maine. Big man. 63340? Six, NCAA players taking advantage of the chance to go back and play another 27 year. starts at Maine. Wow. From Maine to Texas Team Canada, State. U19. Yeah, and he's going to have a great opportunity at Texas State. They're building that offensive line. They've hired a, a new offensive line coach there. Dobson's going to be a, a key part. This is a guy who is an absolute road grader. He's a guy I consider to be at this point, as you can imagine, at, at 340 pounds probably a better run blocker than a pass blocker very powerful guy i know a lot of fans will have seen the the video that was circulating Ooh, evan foster manitoba bison 14 16 okay we played against each other you're d-line you right collide with people i mean he's i remember i remember downs a game in terms of uh, in terms of the run game in terms of 
his blocks. Thanks, Ottawa Keith. We're doing the best we can. Again, we only got audio on this to, time. To Texas State, I guess they don't want me to grow the CFL game in the United States, Canadians. but I'm Kyle doing my Herbal best. I'm doing hometown, my best. Okay. TSN, if you're watching this, hire your boy. They, they go with the Canadian road graders at guard. Yeah, and when you look at this guy, he started a lot of football games, 27 of 32 games at Maine. He wound up starting. And like some of these other players that are trying to make a decision on the transfer portal, Dobson was able to make his decision early to go to Texas State. He was there in January. He took part in their spring ball. Let's see it. And you said I'm watching this. Game. I get to watch it, but you guys don't. So I'm sorry. But I'm watching this, this film right now. At Maine, so... You know, when, and he just, he's just—he's just pancaking people. Uh, it, it's Saturday at Denny's. All you can eat pancake fest. That's what he's doing right now on his film. <laughs> so, you know, he he drove 30 miles from Maine to get down to San Marcos, Texas. They've got a very competitive schedule this year at Texas State. And I think when you look at these futures, as far as these offensive linemen are concerned, not the guys like Alaric Jackson. That's signed, awesome, Evan. Other players, I'm happy for you, man. and alike. You've got to make a projection as to whether or not this guy's got a chance to play. Who's your team, NFL, Evan? Who's your you team? Think he's going to get a long NFL look. You might want to stay away from him early. I think the Bombers have done their homework and have a pretty good indication he'll be available next year. Yeah, Liam Dobson, this is not a surprise pick for me in regards to how high he was selected and if he could play. But it's a surprise in regards to what this team is, is looking to do. This is definitely... Uh, telling in regards to offensive scheme wise he's this is a guy you if you want to run the football and control the line of scrimmage this is this is a guy you draft he's we're looking at running the ball and just an in, a guard who can dominate inside <laughs> this this is your guy hold on uh, i'm surprised i gotta turn this down i'm over here reading tweets on twitter on you know cfl draft we got a saskatchewan rough riders fan saying winnipeg has forfeited their pick due to the city not having phone lines or power Woo! they're roasting the Rough Riders are roasting. The football team in regards to Mike O'Shea and the physical the style of football he likely wants to play. Liam Dobson uh, grew up in the Ottawa area, uh, in uh, specifically Osgood, Ontario, and now the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, uh, first pick third overall. Up next, the BC Lions. They okay, Evan, first with Toronto. A year ago, looking to continue to build up the Canadian talent base. But is that your favorite well, team, though? I mean, I'm talking all first time. Who's your favorite the CFL Cowboys team? Cats. We'll be back. Riley. Zone. Touchdown, Lamar Durant. One of his new favorite targets in orange, black, and white. Mark Red bounces off. He'll be tough to catch. Shaq Johnson taken by the BC Lions, 32nd overall. This guy can flat out fly. Touchdown. Oh, what a oh, hit. Oh, 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 hold on. With one of the hits of the year. This
Hamilton Tiger Cats, and I know you were born in Canada, but uh, raised in the U.S. and Massachusetts. Got Jake Bird on the, uh, Jake, on the TV all, already. Congratulations. First pick. Uh, you got the cap on already. You're ready to go. Uh, what does this mean to you going first overall? Uh, I mean, it means everything. Uh, just the trust uh, that Hamilton is putting into me as an organization, and um, it's just unbelievable. Uh, every everyone over in that organization uh, choosing me out of out of everyone in this draft is is really humbling, and I'm so excited to get to Hamilton. You know, meet the fans, put out a great product for the fans, bring home a, a great cup for the fans, and um, and do oh, yeah. great things for this organization. I know oh, you yeah. had some great years. I like this guy. Sorry, I know you had great years at Boston College and then uh, was on the practice roster with the New England Patriots last year. What about your decision to enter the uh, CFL draft and how that came about? Yeah, so basically um, I've been talking about uh, getting eligible for the CFL for two years now. Um, last year I ended up going to the NFL. So, you know, the CFL was pushed back another year and then this year once my time was up with the Patriots uh, I sat down with my parents and we made the decision to to come to Canada and ever since Smart. we made that decision just the excitement is just building and at this point I just I just want to get on a plane right now and go and, and get this thing started me too brother me too I want to ask you about your <laughs> Canadian roots I know you were born in Regina I believe uh, did, did, tell me about that and uh, what in terms of family what this country has meant to you Regina yeah, made so it, I was huh? born in uh, Regina um, along with my two older brothers um, my mom was born in Regina and that's where she lived that's where her mom still lives her brother um, then we moved to Calgary then to the States but you know I've, I have family all over Canada you know my dad's side of the family uh, they're in Newfoundland St. John's um, I have some relatives in in um, Winnipeg in British Columbia um, this guy's got people everywhere place and, and it's <laughs> just going to mean so much for them to see a, a product at home. You know, me coming and playing in Canada instead of the States is, is just going to be, it's going to be extremely exciting for my entire family. And, and I'm sure everyone's jacked up all around Canada right now. We're jacked up here. And, and like I said, oh, I just yeah. can't wait to get, there and get started and, and put on for, for the Burt family and for the Holzer family and, you know, jacked everyone up. that supported me along this entire journey. Roots in different parts of Canada and a team in Hamilton now waiting for your services as well. Congratulations again. Let's get it, Jake. Jake. Let's get it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, I can't wait to get to work and let's go, Tiger Cats. There you go. Oski Wee Wee. Oski Wee Wee, Jake. I said it and, first. Uh, <laughs> we're we're going to move on. He's ready. We're going to move on now to the BC Lions at number four. Um, they traded up. Mount Lions says, let's go Lions. First overall Ray Wilber says, hey, LFG, I'm here for Tyler Packer, Williams. Mike Richot, and Andrew Lions Ricard. They don't let's go, Brady. To show for the six years before that, only uh, one first rounder. Let's live in the chat up, y'all. We got 61 of you in here. Godber. We got to turn um, this thing so up. I need to see the rivalries. This time around, first draft, uh, for Rick Campbell. I need to see the rivalries just heat up in the chat right now, okay? So let's just start going at it. Who's the best team? Who is it? Who is it? Hold on, I'm getting I'm getting a call from from a say Hunter Stewart. We don't know what Jordan Williams is going to turn out like taking number 1 overall last year. He'll certainly get every opportunity to start, but you know, sample size is small. Hold on one second. I can't hear you. What do you do if you're a BC Lion right now? I mean, do you want to get somebody who can come in and play right away? I'm not sure they necessarily believe there's an impact player available right now. To me, I think they need to go defensive line. I mean, they haven't had an impact Canadian along the defensive line since Brent Johnson retired. So if it was me, I, I think there's a couple of defensive linemen there that if you believe you're going to get them in a year, certainly futures picks. But if you can wait a year, I think they can mine some gold along that side of the ball. I had to answer that, y'all. That was a business yeah, call. Yeah, agreed in terms Woo. of the defensive line situation. They've had a couple of picks that didn't Crumbs really says the Toronto Argonauts. Okay. Position. And when you look at their I see roster, Crumbs. It, is, it really is a screaming need. Is essentially they only have two Canadian sign who are inexperienced guys and so they one way or another need to add some depth there you mentioned uh, some of the guys that are out there as possibilities uh, Mohamed Diallo is far and away the top interior defensive lineman in this class from Central Michigan 6'4 300 pounder who's an explosive player there's a, a terrific edge rusher in Daniel Joseph out of North Carolina State, as we mentioned earlier. Younger brother of former CFL or Alex Custer, LFG, Kennedy. Terrell He's Jana next up. Coming guy. home. Let's go, so, Terrell Jana. Options on the inside. Shout out Jalen Jana. You got to look at the, the defensive That's line. my boy. Malcolm Lee. Let's go. I'm going back to Jake Bird. This has been a tough year for everybody in, in, our, in our country and a lot going on. That guy, can I, can I please uh, chaperone him, host him when he comes in town? 
Uh, give him my number. I'll be happy to hang out with that guy. He's he's ready to put on for the city, and uh, I love it. Uh, infectious personality. That's a great pick. Uh, Farhan, you said it. Someone had to say it. Uh, the BC Lions haven't had an uh, impact defensive lineman since. Brett Johnson. Every year, it seems, we say that. So let's maybe this year will be the year that we can stop saying that because someone's going to come in on the defensive line and dominate, and we can all stop saying that, although we love to talk about the Hall of Famer, BJ. I'm just getting the feeling the three of you are sensing a defensive lineman coming up now. Let's, let's find <laughs> a out. A D lineman line coming up? Taking. Is that what we're thinking? Commissioner? With There's the our guy. Pick in the 2021 CFL draft, the BC Lions select Daniel Joseph. Defensive Daniel lineman, Joseph! North there Carolina he is, y'all. The chat's been Edmonton, calling for him. You are on the clock. Congrats to Daniel Joseph going to the BC Three Lions. Big D lineman out of North uh, Carolina State. Daniel Joseph came up, and Dwayne, you talked about the family connection, uh, Faith Akakati, uh, S.A. Marabari Jufo as well. Um, and uh, the necessary pick, you think, for the BC Lions? Yeah, I, I think they had to look at, at adding a high-end defensive lineman, even if it's a guy you're going to have to wait for. And, and that is the situation with Daniel Joseph. He's going to play his last year of eligibility at North Carolina State. This is a guy whose college career started off slowly. He was originally a, a Penn State recruit, was there for, for his first few years, but didn't see a lot of playing time. Moves on to NC State, ends up leading the team in sacks, six and a half sacks. NC State led the team in sacks? In, in 11 games. Malcolm um, Lee's in this thing. Malcolm, hit the subscribe button, man. Come me, on. The thing that we got the suit. Right away. No, we got the time. Just the way that he Come constantly on. runs to the football. The motor is always going, but we're here. We're all business. All business. New haircut. Field, you feel me? He's always running to the football. <laughs> high energy, high motor guy. That I think, if he's not in the National Football League, is going to be a terrific edge guy in the CFL. Yeah, and talking to Lions co-general manager Neil McAvoy, he tells me we felt he was the best defensive lineman on the board. We wanted to get better on the D-line, and now this gives us an opportunity to play a defensive lineman in the future. And, and when you look at this guy, he's a tremendous athlete. He had a fantastic year at North Carolina State, and you run that risk that if he goes back because of the free year of eligibility and has another great year, what happens as far as the NFL is concerned? But he's a little bit of older of a, of a project, uh, so by the time he comes out at that point, he's 25 years old, maybe not necessarily <laughs> the age that the NFL wants to get involved. The so Colt 45 show said, let's go Montreal can can I can't agree with that, but hey, to each his own. Coming on the defensive line and, and coming off the edge and, and making plays for this team. He can be that guy this team has <laughs> missed since Brent Johnson last retired. And hey, he also played tight end in high school and got 18 <sighs> touchdown passes, so you can slide him in sometimes and run some gadget plays with him as well. Yeah, look, he can play right now. I agree with you guys. Looking at his film, what's the number one thing you want from a, a pass rusher, from a defensive enter, anybody coming off the edge? It's get off. And it's get off and then turn the corner. And that's what I saw in Daniel Joseph. I saw get off and then, look, if he was a, if he was a vehicle, he'd be hitting the corner on two wheels. He watched this guy turn the corner at his size, a bigger body. Uh, you know, he's a tighter guy. 245 says, I know you're a tiger cat. Hey. And that's... Uh, you know, that's what you want in a pass rusher. And We're all here as one right today. Now, We're, right we now, just all want to see football being played. There's no true rivalries today. To come in and dominate for the BC Lions since... Bronson Ross says bombers for back to back. I don't know if we could do that. I don't know if we could let them do that, Bronson. The Lions, <laughs> which leads us now to the Edmonton Football Club choosing at fifth. Halfway through the Edmonton Football Club. First round of the draft. They still the don't have a name. The last two years in round one, they took defensive lineman Matthew Betts third overall two years ago, and offensive lineman uh, Thomas Jack Cardilla uh, out of the University of Buffalo uh, a year ago. This is a team that has gone through quite a bit of change since they last played it down in 2019, Farhan. What do you expect them to do? Yeah, when I look at them, I, I think depth on both sides of the line of scrimmage because if you look at their projected depth chart, you could get Boateng and also possibly Matthew Betts starting along the defensive line. So if that happens, you've got to give yourself some some backfill there uh, offensive lineman as well you know you lose a guy like matt o'donnell so you might want to get some younger and build some some added depth in the pipeline so i think they go in the trenches far on well, they go the you wearing pants pick. man I'm so sure because i'm not i know last year he players. said he wasn't wearing pants just a top yeah, when, suit when you look at their roster one of the things that stands out to me is that they've lost some canadian linebackers the only canadian linebacker currently under contract is 2020 draft there's a question. Will CFL and XFL happen? That's a good question. And I'm no insider. <laughs> but my speculation, from what I've seen, I think it could happen. I think there's a high possibility. 2022, 2023. I'm 0 for my last couple 
against us, so I'm just gonna let this one roll out and, and see and see what happens. Uh, there's so much, like I say, so much talent uh, at offensive line, so much talent at defensive back, and a guys can come and play right now at offensive line. Edmonton, Edmonton's first pick, number five, Commissioner. With the fifth pick in the 2021 Cheer, CFL draft, give it to us. The Edmonton football team selects Cole Nelson, defensive tackle, Alberta. Okay. Ottawa. You are grassroots. Out of Alberta, out of Edmonton. Interesting. So the choice of Cole Nelson that I. Uh, Congrats, is Cole, on being the, drafted the to the Eskimo. The are, are you surprised? I'm over here messing up. The, the football team. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised by by Cole Nelson going this early in the draft, uh, simply because he's he's a relatively raw player. But what this speaks to is simply supply and demand. We've talked a lot about the fact that they're really in terms of immediate help. The only defensive lineman you would talk about as, as a guy who's ready to play in this draft, the only interior guy, would be Mohamed Diallo. But he's a guy who's looking at another year of NCAA football, so not going to be in camp this year. Cole Nelson, a local guy being from University of Alberta, coached by Chris Morris, uh, six foot six, over 300 pounds, runs his 40-yard dash in sub five seconds. And this is a kid who's worked very, very hard. The Washington football University team and the Alberta. Edmonton football Chris team. Chris <laughs> Morris told me when this kid got there, he couldn't bench press 225 pounds once. Well, now he's up over 20 reps, really starting to come along as a player. It's going to take some time for, for him to develop. But definitely when you look at what the physical tools are, uh, this is a guy who could be well worth the investment. And Brock Sunderland this concurs. Seems to he tells me like huge... Just wanted to echo that. Brock Sunderland tells me basically the same thing, that he's got huge size, a tremendous athleticism, and that there's only so many people on the planet that can move like that and are that athletic at that size. So, again, as Dwayne mentioned, minimal experience. There were some around the league who suggested he could potentially be a guy that eventually converts into 25 a, reps on the bench. Sheesh. He's got those kind of movement skills. No, I can but do that. Eskimos, <laughs> with those two defensive edge players, you can give yourself a bit of a rotation if you can fast track him. Now, again, He's going to be in camp right away, but will he be ready to contribute right away? That's anybody's guess, but they wanted to get their hands on him sooner than later. Exactly what I was thinking, Farhan. You you beat me to it. I'm, I'm seeing you got Botan, you got Betts. Now, all of a sudden, you can look at this as a rotation. I like the play. Elks. I like I mean, Edmonton Elks. One of those guys, Botan or Betts, on, in passing situations, slide them down into a tackle spot and get some speed in your interior rush and still have the other guy outside i think this is a situational play as well if you're looking at a thin we're looking at a thin defensive line draft this is probably the thinking in edmonton is a situational play at least at least luke in the fall for year. saskatchewan he's got to beat out the cody for jardo first gone to defensive linemen after starting off with a tight end and a safety and an offensive lineman up next ottawa's on the clock they went defense last year for just the second time in their history do they go back to offense this time we'll be back with the Ottawa Red Blacks, first pick in the 2021 CFL draft.
Outstanding catch. Oh, and a touchdown. We're back. We're back. Ottawa Red Blacks on the clock. Colt 45 says he wants to see who his Al's pick up. I don't think the Al's pick until the second round. And now we are up to pick six in round one of the CFL draft yep. in the Ottawa Red Blacks. Their draft history doesn't go much further back than this, but the trend is the same. It has been mostly offensive linemen in round one with Laval defensive back Adam O'Claire joining Antoine Pruno as the rare exceptions hey, on Adam defense. O'Claire. Uh, That's my guy. Desjardins always like to draft offensive linemen early on, Farhan. What are you expecting this time around? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense for them again because you, they lost Evan Johnson. They lost Jason Lazon seguin from last year's team. So you, you've got uh, Alex Fontana, who was drafted two years ago, who's potentially the one depth piece. He'll battle with Mark Corte uh, as well. So when you look at where they're at, I think defensive linemen or offensive linemen, I should say, is a priority and maybe not so much a futures, but maybe one of those Canada West offensive linemen that's available today. They brought in Daniel Peterman to give uh, Anthony Coombs and Brad Sinopoli a bit of support at the receiver positions so they could potentially... Yeah. Adams Jr. Well, will have a great year. For me, he flew, his, he flew the team out the most sense for them, given to Oregon. And the fact that 20K yeah, on the team. That's, and, and that's commitment right there. That's leadership right there. In the present. Yeah, definitely a history at, on the offensive line, especially when you look at the fact that over the last two free agent seasons, we've seen them lose two Canadians, Jason Lausanne Seguin, as well as Evan Johnson, both departing Ottawa as free agents. So it Again, given the, the trend with this team over the years and given the, the losses that they've suffered in free agency, I think that that becomes a, a possibility for them. But there are a few prospects as well with some, some Ottawa roots still out there on the board if they did want to look at defensive back. For example, Patrice Rene, terrific corner who played at the University of North Carolina, transferring to play his final year next year at Rutgers. Uh, one of the top players still on the board as well. So there are options. Oh, La Police, the head coach, guys. He just got there. Give him some tools. How about Terrell Jenna, wide receiver, Virginia? He's, uh, to me, he was one of the best guys on film I saw. And also, I have no question he could play Let's right get away. Terrell Jenna there. Yeah, he gets there. Uh, but that's... Don't let Terrell Jenna fall to nine. Know. Marcel loves to drop offensive line. Cats will come get him. A whole lot of success doing it. Uh, so, I see I see what it looks like. But I can see maybe giving Lapo some love here and giving him a, a weapon... And Jenna, the wide receiver. Well, still waiting. Is Ottawa's pick in? Ottawa's pick is in right now. So let's go back. Let's to hear it. Ready? Let's hear it, Mr. Ambrosi. With the sixth pick in the 2021 CFL draft, the Ottawa Red Blacks select Deshaun Stevens, linebacker. Deshaun Maine. Stevens, big Toronto, linebacker out of Maine. The clock. Played with him in Team Canada, U19 Deshaun International Stevens Bowl. Of Toronto. In fact, uh, he was helping out in the setup of the 2012 Grey Cup. Uh, held in Toronto when the Argos beat the Calgary Stan Peters, but uh, spending his last his college years in Maine. Uh, once again, says he not yeah, not that's not yet. Focus. Surprised that he goes this early. <laughs> focus. Uh, focus. 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 Based on ability, I think Deshaun Stevens is is a guy who gives you great. They need to show the the, the war rooms. He's been the starting middle linebacker at the they University do. of Maine, but a guy who's also frequently on passing downs lined up as a defensive end. Terrific pass rusher, highly productive player on defense. Uh, suffered an Achilles injury oh, yeah. and the, during the 2019 season that allowed him to take a redshirt season that year. Came back and played a spring season with Maine this year. 36 tackles, I believe, in four games, demonstrating that he is he is back up to full speed. Now, interesting situation for him. But all congrats to the Sean Stevens. That. Yeah, because uh, he, Stevens would like to transfer from Maine and get to an FBS school. He was really kind of inspired by his former Team Ontario and Team Canada teammate, Alonzo Adai, who did the same going from New Hampshire to West Virginia. He had a major impact. Stevens would like to do the same and would potentially have two years of eligibility if he wound up doing that. But so far, that opportunity has not come to him. So on the surface, we view him as a futures pick, a guy that is potentially going to go back. But I'm hearing more and more that if the right opportunity doesn't come, and in fact, Stevens said this himself to media locally a couple of days ago, that he's not going to go back to Maine. He would play in the CFL right away. And my understanding is that that Division I FBS opportunity that he so covets might not be there for him, and he might be available to come to the CFL this year. This might be the first scenario where the threatening to go back, or at least uh, as he looks at his opportunities and with his contract, that's how he weighs it. Now, that's, uh, you know, I'm looking at it from his, in his shoes right now. When I look at 
negotiate my contract. And if I want to go back or not, I think this has to come into play for a guy who does first have First round options. pick, go back? And yes, he can go, go to the, the CFL. Look at his film. He could play Will. Uh, he could possibly play Mike as as, we, as he plays. Uh, but, yeah, coming off the edge, he's a guy that's really versatile for Mike Benavides over there. But, yeah, he's going to look at, at what he can do here uh, contract-wise and then uh, what opportunities come down south. But uh, interesting pick. Interesting indeed for the Ottawa Red Blacks, the third time in their history. They have started with a defensive player in the second straight year, uh, taking Deshaun Stevens from Toronto. Grew up watching the Argonauts, who are next up now for their first round pick. The Argos. They did very well with Shane Richards. Do they, do they even have any more room to sign year. anybody? They, they signed everybody who's anybody <laughs> in free agency. They had three of the first 11 picks of that draft. And considering how they've added significant Canadian talent from free agency as well, Farhan, uh, is this one of the teams Nathan Rourke has a brother in the draft today? I don't know. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I think they absolutely to, could because I think the Toronto to Argos have as good of Canadian content as there is in the league given what they've done, not just this past offseason, but also last offseason for the year that wasn't. And, you know, you wind up adding Enoch Mwamba, you wind up adding Cam Judge, so you've changed your ratio with two linebackers. Their backup linebackers are really good with guys like Shorthill and Cuomo and Jack Kasser, who they lasted, drafted last year. So, you know, could you potentially bring in uh, an additional defensive back? They're looking at possibly starting four offensive linemen. It might not be Noel that, uh, that goes there. They could wind up uh, getting Campbell, Blake, Bladdock, and Speller all in along the offensive line. So potentially a futures offensive line pick as well. But if you're the Toronto Argos and everything that they've done the last off seasons to fortify their Canadian content, you can be patient. Well, and one guy they may want to be patient for is one of the, the big fish that's still out there. His name has been mentioned before in this show, Mohamed Diallo, a Toronto kid uh, who's been playing at Central Michigan. Terrific disruptive force in the, the interior of the, the defensive line. Another guy whose future is a little bit uncertain, looking for, for an offer at a bigger school, having played in the, the MAC, but not sure if that's going to pan out and whether that might mean he, like Deshaun Stevens, keeps open the option of coming to the Canadian Football League in 2021. If your Canadian talent wins the championships, uh, Grey Cups, guys, you might as well crown the boatman right now. Great Cup winners this year. Uh, they have, they're loaded. They're absolutely loaded. They That's are loaded. I can see this being they a got everybody. Play. And we've talked about the guys who have NFL shots. Uh, when I think, when I think sexy, I think John Murphy. So they're going to have a sex. I think John Murphy goes with a sexy <laughs> pick here. Sexy and John Murphy, they go together uh, like milk and John cereal. Murphy. So let's see what happens here. But I think they go with one of these NFL futures guys. John Murphy, Pinball Clements, and Toronto Argonauts. Javon Holland. Uh, they, they, they need to, to get Javon Holland's rights if he ever, ever right happens to be available, which he probably CFL won't. Draft. First <laughs> round still going on here on TSN. Argos are next. We'll be right back, y'all. It's just an average day in Fun City. But what's this?
back in 2019. The runner-up for that award, the other finals, was Pam Judge. Here comes the judge. Also now in Argo. With the Argonauts adding so many new players here, they arguably have the top Canadian talent in the league. Rod Smith, Wayne Ford. Uh, it's a bleeding light. Farhan Lulji now. It's still in the first round of the CFL draft. We are through six picks. We're awaiting word from the Toronto Argonauts for their uh, first pick. Who are the Argos going to take? Just following up on what you were talking about. Who are we thinking about, in chat? Done, Who are we thinking? This being the second draft since the CFL has last played a game in stocking the shelves uh, in terms of Canadian content. Well, I mean, you know, we, we talked about the, the biggest changes being the two players at linebacker, but you go back a year ago, and then they added a, a guy like Joan Breskison, who's going to wind up anchoring their receiving core. And really, you want to create as much as possible an experienced roster around what is going to be an experienced head coach and an Does he go there? quarterback. And we certainly believe that Ryan Dinwiddie and Nick Arbuckle will have all, all the tools to be extremely successful, but they're still going to be going into a new environment. They added a number of NFL players this offseason in the receiving core and along their defensive line so again players that have had a lot of pro experience but not necessarily in the cfl when you bring in guys like moamba you add some leadership pieces they got some pieces along the offensive line so again i think trying to stock a, a veteran lineup as much as possible to surround some young quarterback a young quarterback and a young head coach and now i think you know they're trying to build culture as much as possible right now in toronto and i think that's really important with who you wind up selecting here and about to add uh, more Canadian content now, as I understand the pick is in, uh, in this first round for the uh, Toronto Argonauts. Commissioner? With the seventh pick in the 2021 CFL Draft, the Toronto Argonauts select Peter Nicastro, offensive lineman, Calgary. Oh, lineman. Calgary, you're on the clock. So Out of Calgary. University of Calgary is the San Peters going the clock now, Dwayne. Interesting. This team wins the venue. They need Cup champ. There you go. Hardly any drafted a year ago, obviously, because of uh, their stage in college. But there are a lot of Stampeder possibilities, including along that offensive line. Yeah, the Calgary Dinos could have four offensive linemen picked in this draft. Peter DeCastro is a guy whose stock has been rapidly rising, not just since the combine, but his teams have had the opportunity to look at his film, get a sense of how athletic he is, how strong he is. This is a guy a little over six foot one, about yeah, I think there's a pounds, bandy. A bit of an edge, physical, Rogan physical bandy. player. For, Out of Calgary. I guess this guy's a strong He must be the better guy than the sleeper. In terms of the, the bench press test at 225. So he has all the physical tools. You think back to, to the Argos picking back in 2015, Sean McEwen, their first round pick in that draft. Toronto is stacked. Right away and played center. Peter Nicastro is a guy cut from the same mold, understands defensive fronts, able to make the calls. Obviously well coached. When you look at the number of offensive linemen over the years that have come out of the University of Calgary and stepped into Canadian Football League lineups, uh, a great right now pick for a team looking to play as we've said, up to four Canadians on that offensive line. And John Murphy tells me that he's a versatile player. He's able to give us a high compete guy who plays right into our culture. And as Dwayne mentioned, this guy's been rapidly rising up draft boards in the last week. We've been spending a lot of time talking about Logan Bandy, uh, who's uh, from the University of Calgary as well. They've also got uh, Tyler Packer, two bigger bodied players. But here Tyler Packer a and Bandy. And player, he beat them both out. Likewise. He's about six foot three. And there's a group of six two, six three guys. You look at Bryce Bell, uh, you look at uh, Connor Bergloff. You know, and, and when you talk about what separates those guys, they're all technically very sound, but there's a strength piece, there's a compete piece that really separates a guy like Nicastro here. Yeah, this Nicastro pick is is to what you're saying. It's a compete, it's a compete guy right now who comes in and you look at the interior of that offensive line, it's gonna be it's gonna be Canadian. And there's some uncertainty with some guys there. They they have guys who can't start but probably need to be pushed. And when you have two starting Canadian linebackers, you got receivers uh, from your ratio standpoint that gives you some flexibility. I think with this pick, John Murphy and the Argos just want to make sure that they have three solid interior guys in that offensive line. And the Castro's a guy that he might not have the ceiling as some of the other guys that are still on the board, but he's a guy who come in and play right now and push those other guys for a starting role. Uh, this team's trying to win right now, and this is a, this is a pick, and uh, it's going to help with that. So second pick uh, 
or second offensive lineman taken in uh, seven picks in so far in round one. A player from University of Calgary as we go to the Calgary Stampeders. And they're for Stamps on the board. winning history in recent years. By no coincidence, Calgary has a recent history of drafting well, uh, going back even before. Almost out of the first round. When they Almost out of the first round. Singleton in the opening round of that year. Do I know the Oski Wee Wee? Of course I do. Adeyemi Berglund, of course uh, I do. Overall. Uh, Farhan, Calgary's biggest needs, uh, are they looking for help right now? I'm pretty sure. I'm yeah, pretty sure. looking for help along the offensive line as well. And we'll I think like Aaron Castro is somebody they were strongly concerned. So I'm getting put on the spot here, but I'm pretty sure it's Oski Wee Wee, Oski Wawa. Holy Mackinac, Tiger Cats eat them raw. I may have missed one line in there, but I'm pretty sure that's for a rookie. That's pretty spot on. Let's see. I'll look it up right now. We're going we're gonna to quote myself. Oski Wee Wee. Let's see it. The Oski Yell. Oski Wee Wee, Oski Wawa, Holy Mac. Yeah, intriguing when I had to check, when I had to check myself to make sure. Team, you mentioned the, not just the recent retirements. Everyone is sleeping on Jana. Let him fall to the Tiger Cats. Well, and I think it, Let him fall to the Tiger Cats. Come on. Come on. Even going back to about 2015, they've lost I do need the top the hat. Canadian Colt 45 show. I do need the top hat. Job of, of billing, but I, I do think that, that adding some depth there, you mentioned the name Logan Bandy earlier, a University of Calgary guy. Um, you know, that, that makes some sense in terms of fit. A guy who has really been in the same facility for for the last four years. Um, a guy who offers a little bit of versatility, maybe not as a starting tackle, but a guy who can, can get you through a game at that spot should you need behind one of your Americans as well. And, you know, Ches mentioned a couple of picks ago. We've got Terrell Janna as a guy who's seen as the most CFL-ready receiver still available at this point. We're going to get the Oski Wee Wee going in the game. Don't worry, Colt 45. So we need the fans right there, now? too. I mean, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers was mighty pissed last they year. They said, is Bo pushing? I saw Bo today. I caught some passes for, from him. The ear of Huff and Dickey and, uh, I don't, I don't think he's pushing guys. for anybody. Okay. He wants, he's, he he's satisfied, but he wants the best picks. players, though, too. So. Well, let's find out now. The first pick by the Calgary Stampeders. Not Who are the Stamps uh, going with? For the Stampeders. Well, they're not ready. It'll be interesting to see uh, what Calgary does do. And you talk about still a couple of offensive linemen uh, from the University of Calgary that we talked about as well. Possibilities here. Oh, now, uh, Claire is going to be a great player. For the Stampeders, first round choice. He's a baller. With oh, I have it. Pick I have it here first. I already saw it. CFL draft, the Calgary Stampeders select Eamon Ogbongamiga. Linebacker, Oklahoma State. It's Amen Ogbong Bamiga. That's how you pronounce it, by the way. So Amen. Congrats, man. Team Canada teammate. He was my roommate there, too. Baller linebacker. I think he signed with the Chargers. Linebacker. What do you think of this choice, Wayne? Yeah, I, I love the pick. Uh, the fact that they've they've gone with a guy who has those those local. They have him listed as an offensive uh, lineman on the TSN Alex, graphic at six five three fifteen. <laughs> the not even close to the right thing. Uh, Amen is a guy who has a chance to be an outstanding middle linebacker in the Canadian Football League. Um, runs very well, a little bit undersized for the NFL. So you wonder, even though he's he's currently under contract with the Los Angeles Chargers, he's a guy who Bolt you, up. you think may not necessarily have a lot of longevity in the National Football League and could turn up in Calgary sometime within the next few years. And we hope you have the longest the career the in, in the NFL, man. Do what you got to do. Looking nah, Malcolm. Yeah, no Terrell to Calgary. Too, guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <And> that's <laughs> he's going to Hamilton. Hamilton's about to draft him right now. I'm, I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone with him. Travell needs a roommate. Like Travell does need a roommate. Machine following Singleton and Greenwood. And hey, looking, thank you for the donation. He wow. Really fits the prototype CFL linebacker. The guy by NFL standards might be a little bit undersized at six foot one, 235 pounds, but this guy can run sideline to sideline. He can drop out into coverage. He can play in space. You know, his numbers in his pro day were solid given what was expected. He's just been a tackling machine for two years. He was on the Butkus Award uh, list for the start of the season as uh, the best linebacker in college football. He's been a captain for two years. So culture-wise, he fits. He's a high-character guy. Obviously, he knows the city of Calgary. 
TSN graphic is playing him. They have him listed as an O lineman. TSN, clean it up. Clean it up. So if they y'all can't see this, he's going to wear red and white for a long, long time, and they're going to love him in Calgary. I like this pick. Roster composition-wise, this uh, this fits for the Stamps because they did they need to add uh, a defensive starter. It's certainly, at, at some point here in this, when you have Corey Green, I can't who, pronounce however you spell that name, but thank you for the donation. It says, great live stream. Keep it going all night. Thank you for the $5 dono. That really helps support the stream tonight. Really appreciate it. We're going to keep it going all night long, as long as we can, until this draft is over. Let's keep it going. Seems to fit the pronunciation, guys. Excellent. Amen, Ogbong Vamiga, getting it down. And yes, one of eight players with NFL ties right now. Four were drafted, the other four uh, undrafted uh, free agents, and he had signed. Colt 45 says, have I started training? Oh, I've been training. We've been training hard five days a week, lifting weights, running, gunning, watching film, learning the Hamilton defense. I mean, we're doing what we need to do to be ready, okay? A lot of guys looking to choose a transfer to college and CFL Pro Shop. I can see that. At the end of the day, these guys are trying to pursue. They're trying to pursue their NFL dreams, right? Like their ultimate goal is the NFL. That's what everyone's goal is. Let's not let's not beat around the bush. But the CFL is there. It's giving me a chance. Giving a lot of guys a chance. Got giving a lot of guys a chance. Okay. But I can see why a lot of these college kids are. Hey, go back, transfer, give me another shot. Maybe I get in the NFL. If not, I'll go play in the CFL. Nothing wrong with that. We want we want football athletes to pursue the greatest that they possibly can, whether that's the CFL or the NFL. They went with a, a guy who steps into the lineup immediately with their first pick. Do they think future with their second pick? It's Jana time. Highly rated guys who's not necessarily going to be in camp. I'm this telling y'all, it's going to be Jana. That, uh, I'm that telling you, I just got off the phone with Coach O. He said, he said it's Jana. For your buck in terms of having those two first-round picks. Yeah, this is the best player available pick here, guys. The roster looks pretty good, and there's a lot of talent left out there. I think they go best player available. And who that is, that who they think that is, let's find out. Let's find out indeed, Chaz, as we go to the final pick, number nine of the first Let's round go. of the CFL Draft Commissioner. It's Jana. Y'all better be ready. With the ninth pick Come on, Jana. of the 2021 CFL Draft, the Hamilton Tiger Cats select Nick Cross. Oh, oh Nick Cross. Let's go, UBC. baby. UBC Montreal, represents. We're on the clock. So Let's go, Nick. With, I don't know, Let's go. Wayne, linebacker UBC, I'll see you in Hamilton, baby. With the Regina Rams uh, before then, Nick Cross. Let's go, yeah, Nick Cross. To Took this dude on his recruit visit this to UBC, by the way. Who, who grew on me the more I saw him through the, the process evaluating players leading up to this draft. He's a guy who, when you, you watch He's UBC a play, whether you're watching to watch Nick Cross or whether you're watching to watch some of their other prospects, you can't help but notice Nick Cross. He's a baller. He listed as a linebacker. He played that Sam or Nick linebacker spot. <laughs> My cat does not want to be up here right now. But he's a guy whose primary position in the Canadian Football League, I think, will will be at free safety. Incredibly high football IQ. Um, Cross is a guy who's Baller. about six feet, 200, 205 pounds. So he does I'll have that six feet, versatility I'll to, to do some <laughs> different things. But number one thing about Nick Cross Congrats, is one Nick. of those guys who's just a, a flat-out football player. And as Farhan suggested earlier in terms of their, their needs and what they might look for, this is a guy who, regardless of whether you look at him as a linebacker or a DB, he makes you better on special teams right now. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at that UBC linebacking core, you had Ben Halatic and Nick Cross. And Cross is the guy that really became that playmaker in 2019. He was a first-team All-Canadian. Wound up setting a school record with 66 tackles. Sean Burke tells me he is explosive. He's a playmaker. He's got a oh, high yeah. football IQ, like you said, 40. An instant upgrade on teams and provides defensive position flexibility. Blake Nilsson, this kid is an exceptional throwback type of uh, He's a baller. athlete. And, uh, baller. Speed, every play. Great Bring him all to Hamilton. Incredible passion for the game. Now, now, the big thing with Nick Cross is, can he stay healthy? Because he had an Achilles tear earlier in his career. Then at the end of the 2019 season, he had a torn ACL. He's about 14 months removed from that injury. My understanding is he's in the final stages. He's running around. He's doing some tremendous athletic No things. Logan Bandy yet. Rob Fry sent a bunch of video of him on the field, moving around, doing some things to every team to make sure they understood he's healthy and he will be ready for the start of training him. And as you said, Dwayne, likely moves to safety over linebacker at this level. Yeah, the injuries for Nick Cross, Achilles, uh, knee injury, those are both just unfortunate injuries. His toughness 
uh, would never be questioned. It, it's funny because we talk about a lot of these guys amongst each other. Uh, we didn't talk about Cross, and what I have in big, bold letters was football player. The same words that both you guys use when talking about this kid. He, to me, if you just had a draft and forget about position, you just had to pick the best all-around football player without a position, uh, a nomad, it would be Nick Cross. His, his film jumped to me. I was super impressed with him. I didn't quite know where I would play him. I, I didn't see a lot of film in him in actual man-to-man -man coverage. I didn't see him in the middle of the field as a, as a free safety on film a lot. But a uh, football player, I think he can play free. If you're saying that he's got a great IQ, then for sure he can play free. I love this kid. I'd love to have him on my team. He's a gamer, tons of energy. Uh, yeah, this guy, this guy's a great football player. So the CFL draft started with an offensive pick by Hamilton, but it ends up being dominated by defense. Six of the nine. Here's a recap of round one, starting with Jake Burt going to the Ticats. Nick Cross also going to Hamilton at the uh, ninth. Hammer time. Between Nelson Hammer Lopez time. Both stays in Saskatchewan going to the Riders. Liam Dobson to Winnipeg. Daniel Joseph. Cole Nelson stays home as well. And uh, Deshaun Stevens, Peter Nicastro, and Eamon Ogbong Bamiga. The same. Bandy at 11 staying in Calgary. Okay. Adam Sinagra. Okay. We'll be right back, y'all. Magenta. announced that they are well as randy put it talking about talking uh how far along are these talks now well they're oh we got insider dave rod and these, this is on the xfl cfl it's what he has to say non-disclosure agreement so neither side can talk about what's going on but we do know a little bit about the structure and how these talks are taking place with basically different committees that involve people from the cfl and from the XFL side of things, including Dwayne The Rock Johnson is involved in this, where they're looking at different areas, trying to see the business and see what the benefits are for either side of what a collaboration would look like. And so that before they get to some of the logistical issues, they need to drill down and say, okay, how does this affect the bottom line business of the XFL side, of the CFL side? What are the positives? What are the drawbacks before they go to that next stage? Now, a lot of questions about how a CFL, XFL collaboration would come together and frankly, when it would come together. And there's been no official decision on that, but based on my conversations, I think there's a strong likelihood that if the two leagues were to come together, were to Dominic, come together, he's about, he's 20, about 5'10". 5'10", 5'11", on a good day. Right now, I've, I've uh, seen him before. In May, 
if a season was to start you know how all the football players we had like two inches and 15 pounds onto what we actually are <laughs> uh, first incarnation or the latest incarnation of the xfl they had all their coaches hired before 10 months within 10 months of the start of the season so i think when you look at the challenges the cfl now going to play the great cup hopefully this season in mid-december uh, i think it's much more likely that we would see a collaboration if it happens for 2023 is done about to start round two it's round two forward. baby no season last year it's a round two snake craft meaning round two will uh, go in reverse order beginning with montreal which didn't have a first round selection for the third time in four years so here's a look at the alouette's recent second round history this is danny machocha's second draft since taking over as montreal's gm uh, early last year they had two second round picks a year ago going with defensive back mark antoine de and defensive lineman cameron lawson so what about their needs, Farhan, on offense? Pierre-Olivier Lestage, perhaps? Yeah, well, I think that certainly makes a lot of sense given his ties to Danny Machocha and the University of Montreal. And talking to Machocha earlier in the week, he talked about wanting to go with four Canadian offensive linemen, if at all possible. And they've got four there. And they've got three potential backups already in the building, including guys like Zach Wilkinson and uh, David Foucault as well as uh, Landon Rice. So they do have some depth, but I think you can have a great there when you're it's looking at big time for you, Colt like 45. Makes some sense. And then you've got a guy like Decroix, who was selected a year ago. He spent some time with the Green. Bay Packers now he's signed and ready to go and I think they've got him penciled in to that starting lineup at the safety position so maybe some backup in the secondary at the defensive back spots too if they think they've got somebody they like there as well but again whoever you take in the secondary in this year's draft with Lacombo already off the board is going to be a futures prospect as well so yeah there hasn't been any decision that I think it will be I think it'll be really mixed Canadian American rules but I think it'll be four downs unfortunately I love the Canadian football game by the way positions that they might look at possibly adding that you don't have to question where my allegiance in lies <laughs> they've got guys who can can be there behind Dequa right now but there may got our guys in this draft class who may be an upgrade going forward um, as far as Pierre Olivier Lestage listen there was a lot of talk leading up to this draft about the betting odds for the first overall pick I think the most prohibitive odds you would see in this draft would be that at some point Danny Machocha would draft Pierre Olivier Lestage <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna be Colt Forty Five? Who, who do you need? I, I thought I didn't who think do you need on the house? Last this long, but if he did, there was absolutely no doubt that I think Danny Machocha would go out and get him here. I actually thought it was a possibility Danny might work a trade to get him, so I'd be very surprised if Danny Machocha doesn't oh, get Lyman? a massage in this spot. But, uh, it's a I think it's Lestage as well. Lestage still available, and Montreal has a pick. Let's go to the commissioner. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. With the 10th pick in the 2021 Randy. CFL Draft, the Randy. Montreal Alouette select Pierre Olivier yep. Lestage. Come on. You know Danny Machocha is Montreal. not going to leave any Calgary, Montreal players on the, on the board when it's his turn. To start the second round, Dwayne Ford. There you go. It is Lestage. The Mont you might as well call him the Montreal Carabins. Undrafted free agents who did get a call from Pete Carroll uh, saying they wanted him, and, and he is with Seattle right now. Yeah, absolutely no surprise. Seattle, he FSB. Based on <laughs> ability alone, yeah, this is a guy who would would have been off the board even earlier, considered the top U Sports offensive lineman available in this draft class, in the discussion as one of the top offensive linemen available, period. And you talk about the, the NFL interest in this young man, had at least 18 NFL teams contact him prior to the draft had Zoom calls with a number of them. He trained under longtime NFL offensive line coach Paul Alexander, had a pro day with him and generated that interest. You um, can never have so enough good O-linemen. O-linemen play forever. Forever. Smart, Ten years tough, minimum. Great leader. Um, plays with a fantastic edge off the field, but a great character player in, in the locker room and uh, a potential great addition for Montreal if they get him. Um, could have a long NFL career, though, given the amount of okay. interest that was shown in him after the draft. Can't be up there. Yeah, no doubt. Cats about it. climbing on the Danny keyboard. Machocha texted with him, and he said they're treating him, of course, like a futures pick, gambling like they did a year ago with Mark Antoine Ducroix. They think he's physical and he can play anywhere along that offensive line. And let's talk a bit about his chances in Seattle. Because Montreal never Seattle beat UBC, had though. The second smallest <laughs> class in the history of the NFL draft, just three picks. They took one offensive lineman late, but that's a projected tackle, a big six foot eight player. They're not necessarily looking at inside with that pick, but they do need to get better there. They need to improve the interior of that offense. 
offensive line, particularly in center. So from that standpoint, I think there's going to be a great opportunity for Lestage here. In terms of investment, the Seahawks only paid him an $8,500 signing bonus, which is relatively low. Lestage turned down bigger <laughs> offers. $8,500? So from a financial standpoint, <laughs> I'll take really that any day. <laughs> tying the Seahawks to him, but I think they do understand that this guy's got some ability and he's worth a, lo a look. How long of a look? We're about to find out. If he winds up coming back like Dequa did, great for Montreal, but I do think he's going to wind up in Seattle for at least a couple of seasons. Stamps are back. Janet of the Stamps, Mal? Travell's need a roommate? Wants that. I'm certain that Danny wants these guys, I want the stars to stick down south, and he wanted Mark Anthony Dequa last year to stick down south. There's no doubt. We, we all do. But this is, we've talked a lot about, and there's been a lot of conversation about territorial picks uh, throughout the time of, of the Canadian Football League and what that would mean. That's really what they're doing in Montreal is saying, hey, look, if there's a good player that's from our area, we're going to get him, whether he's here a year from now, or two years from now, down the road. And, and you look at the second contract, Dwayne, you've talked about it a lot. I know we've had these conversations. Down the road, the second contract, you got a better chance to get these guys signed. So, yes, there's a risk now, but the reward is you keep a guy for 10 years. And look back throughout our careers, guys. 10 years. Told you. You have a team that has a lot of local guys on that team. Every team I've been on, it's a tighter group of guys. It's just, it's a special thing. I love what they're trying to build. I love the pick. And I think, I think there should be more of it around the CFL, but I like what Danny's doing. Well, another pick with a local connection as well, as we saw from a few teams in the first round, such as the Calgary Stampeders snake draft. So in the second round, Calgary will choose for the second time in four picks. They went linebacker in the first round. Who do the Stamps go with next? We're gonna we'll be back, y'all. We'll be back. CFL draft 2021 on GSM. With the 11th pick in the 2021 CFL Draft, the Calgary Stampeders select Bryce Bell, offensive lineman, Wilford Laurier. Toronto, you're on the clock. Bryce Bell of Wilford Laurier. We were speculating, Dwayne, on would they go with an offensive lineman even in round one uh, with a number of Calgary Dinos available as well, but going to, the, uh, to Bryce Bell uh, in the OUA. Yeah, and I think knowing that they had another pick coming up quickly, given the, the format of this draft, um, Calgary had a sense 
linebackers typically not having quite the supply that you have of offensive linemen, so they took the linebacker first, get a terrific young offensive lineman here. Bryce Bell is a guy who played tackle for Michael Falls and the Wilfred Laurier Golden Hawks. Projected as an inside guy, he's been working on snapping the football, so he can play center, very, very cerebral player, uh, can play center, can play guard. Very hardworking young man. Um, he's a guy who came into to Wilfred Laurier at about 235 pounds and has worked his way up to the point where he, for the National Combine, the virtual combine, weighed in at 295 pounds, which is the weight he anticipates playing at in the Canadian Football League. Again, a guy who may not be... A, May not play immediately, but a fast Sorry, learner. I had my mic player. muted. <laughs> and I think a, a guy who is going to have a very With Philo gone, who moves the center, Revenberg or Sirocco? With Gibbons replacing a and yeah, Wood Manzi back really there. Athlete with very good room to grow. I yeah, can see either Sirocco or, right or Rev. Hopefully he can play tackle for them, possibly guard or center. But this is the thing with Bryce Bell is that he's very athletic. Technically, he's very sound. He's always played tackle. Now, the assumption with all these Canadian linemen, especially if you're six foot three and under, is that you go inside and play guard. But there are some concerns from people around the league about his ability to anchor and be able to handle the bigger bodies inside. Only 16 at 225 on the bench press. So you can't just assume that he's going to be inside and be that stocky anchor that can that can play in there. But given his athleticism, it might make more sense in this rare circumstance circumstance to give Bell the opportunity to try tackle first before assuming that he's got to go inside. You can't teach good feet. And I'm hearing the same thing you guys are hearing, that Bryce Bell, the issue, if any, with Bryce Bell is that he's a little light in the butt and he has trouble keeping the weight on. But I can I can handle that. I, I prefer a guy, as he gets older, we all know he's going he's gonna to gain weight. But, it, you know, you got a guy that has great feet, uh, he works hard to put the weight on. Dwayne talked about as he came in and has worked hard to get heavier. I, I would take a guy like Bryce Bell who has great feet all day long. And look, he can, uh, unlike Dwayne, Dwayne came in, he was heavy enough. He couldn't he couldn't keep the weight off, but he had cement feet. I'll take Bryce Bell, the guy who's got great feet, and I'll just hope he eats enough. Care for a rebuttal, Mr. Ford? Well, I'll, let, I'll <laughs> let Chez get away with that one. I'll have my chance. Because <laughs> Jez is Dwayne, right have you got now. the bag of, have you, you do that Dwayne got studio. the bag of meats? <laughs> hey, third <laughs> offensive lineman uh, taken so far. Uh, the last one, Peter Three McCaffrey, the University of Calgary to the Toronto Argonauts, who quickly have their second round pick coming up. Who will the Argos, we got the Argos up in the snake draft? 2021 second round on TSN. We'll be back.
second round so far. Round one. Here's what they've done in the last five years. In the second round, two last year and two in 2019, including Robert Smith and Matthew Botang. So the second round pick, 2021. Once again, the commissioner. There he is. Randy. With the 12th pick. Ran the man. 21 CFL draft. The Toronto Cheeseburgers. Argonne selects Sage Doxtater. Offensive line Sage. New Mexico State. I think he's a returnee. He's not coming this year. He's going back to school. Big Sage Doxtater who uh, didn't get to play uh, in New Mexico State because of uh, the, one of the U.S. schools, Wayne, that didn't play last year because of COVID-19. Yeah, they, they managed. They didn't play the fall season. They managed to get in a, a couple of games in the fall, which was actually a nice thing for, for Doc Stater, who was coming off a shoulder injury in 2019. Um, this is an absolute mountain of a man. Six foot seven, about 340 pounds, but surprising quickness at that size. He's a guy who you anticipate Part of what makes him a fit for the Toronto Argonauts is that he can take some reps at tackle. They've had Jamal Campbell start there in 2019, drafted there in Churchill, a guy who can take some reps at tackle as one of their high picks Ooh. last year. Doc Stater is another guy who fits that mold in terms of giving them some flexibility. And, of course, you know, the pick makes me smile because his younger brother Tanner, who played in the CFC prospect game on TSN a couple years ago, is a Western Mustang commit. So there you go. There you go, and John Murphy tells me that uh, he's the best offensive tackle in the class. He's a future, but he gives them a local kid that's flexible yeah. and has a tremendous character. Okay. And you mentioned New Mexico State, one of only three FBS programs that didn't play in the fall. He got his two games in in the spring, but he's been a four-year starter. And he said that that entire season off has made him feel healthier than he's felt at any point in his career. And you talked about his size, six foot seven, 350 pounds. He's been a vegetarian since he was a young boy at that size. A veggie? He's been able to Woo. grow to that. He grew up in the Oneida Nation, and he hopes to be a role model for other indigenous youth. And there is a, a thought that, look, this guy might get an NFL opportunity given that size and those movement skills. So we'll see. He's going to get a test in November. New Mexico State plays at Alabama. If he can hold up there, you never know. Yeah, a role model for the indigenous youth. He growing up, he said he didn't have anybody to look at like that. Uh, a, a great, this is a great pick. And if you look at the formula for so far this offseason for the Argos, and there hasn't been, I'll be blunt, there hasn't been a lot of success in, in the draft picks over the last at least five years in Toronto. And I don't mean them all, but they haven't, they haven't drafted all that well. So they went out and they paid for a lot of good Canadian free agent and now if Ray Jensen, now it looks that like John did. Murphy is going to stack that offensive line where you usually build through the draft. And, and that looks like the formula. And I actually, I really like what they're doing. You have, you go out and get the guys you need to play now. You build your offensive line and uh, they can, they can right the wrongs and really quickly and have a team that's formidable right now. And uh, two picks by the Argos, two offensive linemen. And First, uh, Peter Nicastro, and now a Sage Dockstetter. So, uh, doing a good job, Toronto is, and uh, replenishing Canadian content on the offensive line. Uh, earlier in this draft, second you? overall was Nelson Lacombo. You didn't tell me anything, Saskatchewan. Mal. Defensive back, staying in his home province, uh, taken by the Saskatchewan to the stands. And uh, just uh, moments ago, I had this conversation with Clara Hanna. Well, they got the Zoom call on mute on TSN. <laughs> They're struggle bussing. They don't have it like Stav does, that's for sure. They need to hire me. Claire Unmute Hannah him. Talking, uh, to Nelson <laughs> See, I told, the, uh, I told you. I told you. They, they need your boy over there. The number two pick overall in this Canadian Football League draft. So the Argos have chosen. Okay. And they're a second rounder. And, and next up, the Ottawa Red Blacks. Uh, and their second round pick, they went on the defensive side of the ball in the first round. Here's what they've done. Uh, of note, there is certainly Marco Dubois and Anthony Gosselin. Uh, what? Yeah, they have Sage Doctor listed as a DB uh, at 6'7", uh, 320 pounds right round. there. And their pick is in now, Commissioner. Who's running this? Who's running the show over there? Because you know, they're not paying attention. With the 13th pick in the 2021 CFL draft, Here we go. the Ottawa Red Blacks select Alonzo Adai, defensive back, hey, West Virginia. DB. Edmonton, you're on the clock. 
Alonzo or die. 5'10", 190. Adai, a highly touted Dwayne. We were talking about him before and really speculating, could he actually go earlier in this draft, but uh, looking like a good pick for Ottawa as they stay on defense. Yeah, Mike Benavides has got to be grinning from ear to ear as the Ottawa Red Blacks defensive coordinator as he gets a guy who has become one of my favorite guys in this draft class. Alonzo Adai is a guy who transferred from New Hampshire, a smaller school, to play on a bigger stage at West Virginia. Stepped in, moving from corner to the safety spot. Stepped in as a starter. Highly productive player. Graded out very well. Yes, they need to hire Brody back. On that West Virginia Mountaineers defense. We don't even have the right birth dates anymore. Like, see, everyone, after the 11th pick, they stopped again, doing the birth dates. <laughs> high football IQ. Um, a guy who I think fits very well with today's Canadian Football League offense or, or defenses rather in terms of that flexibility that multiplicity being able to to give various looks with the same personnel now his NFL CFL situation could be interesting after he complete completes his final year of eligibility Farhan. Yeah, absolutely. And Marcel Desjardins thrilled with this pick, says he's tough, plays with speed, he's versatile, he's got a high football IQ, and he's the best all-around package. And Dwayne, I absolutely love this pick. If he plays in the CFL, he can play anywhere on the field in the secondary and potentially even in the Sam spot. The only thing that's going to hold this guy back from the NFL is that he's 5'10". He's 5'10 and about 190 pounds. Truthfully, when I watch him play, you know, I, I look at some guys... We never let that hold us back. You know, some undersized safeties that have done really well, you know, throughout the league but I don't know that he's going to get that opportunity but I think he runs so well he can play downhill he's not afraid to tackle I think his film at West Virginia was actually better than it was when he played in New Hampshire so this is a guy that if they can get him in a year which you have to believe given on based on his size they potentially could I think he's going to have a long career in the CFL and he's going to be an impact player not just a ratio guy I have a comparable for an undersized safety that's been pretty good in the CFL uh, he plays for that same Ottawa Red Blacks team, Antoine Pruneau. Uh, look, this is, I looked at last year's pick, guys, and Eau Claire reminded me a, a lot of what I saw on film. This, this guy's a slasher on a defensive side of the ball. I mean, you watch him, he's flying around the box, he's making tackles, he's shooting gaps, and I'm with you, he could play free safety. I think he'll get an NFL shot, uh, but he could play free safety in the CFL, and now... What's the word, Dwayne? Multiplicity? Yeah, they have some multiplicity back there. Coach Benavidez with tools in the toolbox, guys that can play Sam, guys that can play uh, maybe some field corner, but play Sam, play free in, in Eau Claire, um, and then also in Pruneau. Well, I talked about Ottawa's reputation and recent history anyway of drafting uh, offensive linemen sticking to that side of the ball, but Eau Claire last year in the first round and so far two picks. Another two commercial break. Here we go. In Deshaun Stevens and Alonzo Adai. The Edmonton, S the Edmonton uh, Football Club, excuse me. Uh, they're up next. Their second round pick to Cole Nelson of University of Alberta in the first round. Little Caesars Quattro Pizza is <laughs>
once again, Nelson McConnell in the first round to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Second overall, so staying home there. And here he is in conversation with Claire Hanna. And, See if they got the uh, Zoom. What were some of the emotions um, you felt when you heard your name called second overall by the Riders? Yeah, I, I don't um, know how to describe them. I'm still kind of in shock, uh, but it was all positive, you know. I was very excited. Um, didn't really uh, see that coming, but, um, you know, I got to talk to the coaching staff and um, they already know how they, they want to use me. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited to get going. The proud day for the Lacombos. <laughs> Combo, Tim Berta said, Casatotas, bring me into the live stream. Special guest, Tim Berta. What's up, Darth from Portugal? How's it going? On what Edmonton has chosen to do. With the 14th pick in the 20 Oh, Edmonton's CFL already ready. Here we go. The Edmonton Football Club selects Grant McDonald, linebacker. Hey, University linebacker of out of Calgary. BC, D block. You're on the clock. So they stay in Alberta again uh, for their second round pick. Cole Nelson, defensive lineman from the University of Alberta at number five. And now Grant McDonald, solid linebacker at the University of Calgary, Dwayne. Yeah, no doubt a, a proud moment for UFC defensive coordinator. One of my favorite guys in football, Pat Shea, and to have one of his guys selected here in the second round. Grant McDonald is what his head coach, Wayne Harris, calls a, a terrific downhill linebacker with a high football IQ. He's a guy who in that, that Dino's defense, you notice him and his fellow linebacker, Charlie Moore, both incredibly active. McDonald frequently lining up on the line of scrimmage, um, rushing from the edge, blitzing from his from off the line, blitzing on the inside. Terrific pass rusher, but he does have legitimate sideline to sideline range um, as a typical middle linebacker play or even playing as a, a will linebacker so very athletic guy again great pick for uh, for Edmonton as linebacker is definitely a position of need for them and Brock Sunderland tells me this guy's very athletic he's got great size a high motor and very physical and look I can echo that because I coached against this guy in high school. Both he and Charlie Moore played at South Delta High School in Tawasson. They won a provincial championship here in 2014. Dwayne, I probably coached around 1,000 players or against 1,000 players. This guy is as physical a player as I've ever coached against. He doesn't want to just hit you. He wants to make sure you have felt that he has hit you yep. and that you potentially feel That's how you know you're playing the game the right a way. great football family. His dad, Bruce, was a five-year defensive back at UBC. He left the University of Maine where he was a tight end and their top rookie as a true freshman to go to the University of Calgary in part so he could play with his brother, Jack, who was a receiver. Younger brother, Ben, a quarterback, has just joined that program. Grant said his best moment in life came when he was very young, when he realized that his brothers were his best friends. He's been around the game. He loves it. You can absolutely tell, and I think he's going to be in it for a long time. Yeah, definitely from a football family. and He is a guy, a prototypical CFL linebacker, sideline to sideline with, with speed uh, and also downhill off the edge. Uh, a great fit. They do need linebacker help in Edmonton. This is an absolutely perfect pick. I, I love this pick. Okay, so next up, we have the BC Lions who went with defensive end, Daniel Joseph, clearly addressing a need, as all three of you had talked about. Who are Here's they going? Who we think BC is going with? In the Let me know. In the last five years with their second round pick, Nathan Rourke last year's quarterback, uh, David Mackey as well. Um, Farhan, this time around, it seems so blatant for BC what they needed to do in round one. How about this time around? Yeah, we talked about it in round one that they needed a defensive lineman, and, and I think they need to go this way again. And you know, you always run that risk between trying to pick a, a futures player versus a now player. And when they when they went with uh, Daniel Joseph, you know, he's a guy that you're probably going to have to wait a year for. So if you can get him, that guy's going to be an impact player. But now for this pick. You potentially go on the offensive side of the ball right now, and, and there's a number of futures offensive linemen that are still available, right? They've, they've got to make some improvements along that offensive line. They've still got David Neville, who they drafted a couple of years ago, that, that they haven't necessarily given that opportunity to, to to earn a starting position. You've got Peter Godber, who you took in the first round a couple of years ago. Is he going to get an opportunity to go in and play at center? And can you fortify that back end, right? So 
You know, those are BC those taking are Bandy. Things, that's what we're thinking. A guy like Terrell Jana, who's a local guy, I don't know. Could potentially I could see that. Help at receiver Terrell right Jana, now. though. You're probably going to Malcolm says Jana to the to the stamp. Durant and Shaq Johnson for BC right now. You've got Javon Katoy. Oh, I could see Ben Ben Haddock <laughs> to the Lions. Sure no, Tiger Cats are going to get him. Watch. He's a good player. Just he watch. Haddock. But can you upgrade? Come on down. Guy like Terrell Jana as well. Yeah, to me, Jana is a guy who who fits on exactly the two counts you you mentioned. He fits. On the roster positionally, but also fits in terms of in terms of having that local background and uh, a player who is ready to to step in and, and be on the roster right now. Um, there are obviously a lot of great players still out there. Some the, of the picks already in, and I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> I can board, see it. So tough decision ahead for the the BC Lions, Chess. Yeah, BC could pick anywhere, and it would be a fit in regards to what they need roster wise. Are you surprised, Dwayne, that, that Terrell Jennings hasn't been selected yet? I had him at, at the top of this draft and what I saw. So the BC Lions have made their second round selection. Back to the commission. You guys better guess. I already know who it is. So I can see it right here. With the 15th I got the insider in info. the 2021 CFL draft, the BC Lions select Alaric Jackson. Alaric Jackson. Iowa. Oh, Lyman. Winnipeg, Iowa. You're on the clock. Big man. Alaric Jackson. Big 42 starts. Tackle with the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes and one of the four who wasn't drafted in the NFL, Dwayne, but did sign as an undrafted uh, free agent. And uh, UDFA, interesting okay. choice here for the BC Lions. Yeah, look, looking at the future, and Alaric Jackson Six, five, to me three, is actually eight, a guy teams. whose Woo. CFL stock came up Big a little boy. bit at the NFL draft because I think going into that National Football League draft, most teams anticipated that Jackson, an all-Big Ten offensive tackle playing that left tackle spot, that he would be a guy who would be a late round pick that he would actually get drafted um, he ends up going to the rams as an undrafted free agent now curious thing the rams didn't draft any offensive linemen which could put jackson in a pretty good position to to stick down there for a little while but a player of this caliber um, whose nfl future is uncertain available at this point i think it's it's worth the gamble for uh for the bc lions a guy who winnipeg who back on the clock obviously at, who are at they the taking spot yeah, and the Lions are swinging big here because you've got two players who are not going to be at camp. Both could potentially be in the NFL for a little bit if, if Joseph has a great season next year. But if they get them back, these could be two absolute home run picks because Alaric Jackson was clearly the best offensive lineman on the board as far as the scouting service is concerned. He sat at the top for a while, finished number two, and he had a fifth round grade in the NFL. This guy a, was a fifth second team grade. all American. The guy was a, a four year Ooh. starter at left tackle, started 42 games. He went to senior bowl and then at senior bowl, they moved him around to a number of guard spots just to show that he could be versatile. Now it does beg the question that how could a guy that started 42 I don't know how Halatic hasn't been picked. University of Iowa, an I played with this guy he is an animal from everybody you talk to i don't a think freak in the a, weight room a freak on the you football know, field for reason, i mean maybe it works out for him in the nfl he got a twenty thousand dollars he's got the bonus. best of both worlds Does that keep him there for i'm the telling you he's gonna we'll fall see, to hamilton and we're gonna get him back to bc I mean, you don't want another brett boyko situation where you had to I'm wait just four years you. to get him and ultimately it didn't work out for you at all you want to make sure you're going to get this guy in a couple of years men could play stand up the end he could be a tackle in this tackle this could be a home run pick for bc yeah, no, no question about it. You don't get a four-year starter in the Big Ten at an offensive tackle at this point in the CFL draft very often. So yes, it's a, it's you're swinging for the fence with this one. I think with his signing bonus and the situation there, he probably at least is there for. Uh, they have some interest in keeping him. He's not a camp body. That's that's for certain. But I, I like the pick as well. You, you are swinging here, but you don't get a guy with this type of pedigree playing that kind of football with. Um, you know, with that over four-year period very often. So another, that's three now, undrafted free agents assigned with NFL teams, Larry Jackson. I think Sirocco uh, has played, played center Lions. back at two Calgary. Of the way through the second round. We'll be right back, y'all. Through round two, three picks to go. Up next, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who took offensive lineman Liam Dobson, third overall. Who do they go with this time? We'll be back.
the all-time leader in yards from scrimmage by a Canadian player in the CFL. When in doubt, just hand the ball off to Andrew Harris. All right. We're back, y'all. Almost round two's almost over. Number six pick in the twenty. It's almost round. over. Dimsky, big hole. Dimsky's gonna bust it. Andrew Harris, Nick Dimsky, two awesome running backs. Talk about great Canadian content that makes a difference. Winnipeg Blue Bombers certainly know all about that. Still. The defending Grey Cup champions and a look at what they have done in the second round of the last five years. They went with an offensive lineman in round one. So what about this time around in 2021? Back to the commissioner. All right. Don't leave with Ben the on the board. I'm telling you. In the 2021 CFL draft, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers select Red Hawk Crandy. Defensive back. Red Red Crandy. Saskatchewan, you're on the clock. DB, another Montreal guy. Red Hawk Cramdy, Montreal Caravan Dwayne. This is another one of the names of excellent player, but didn't loom as large in the final uh, draft rankings. What do you think of this choice by Winnipeg? When do your Al's get another pick? Like I think what it's we round talked three. about with Peter Nicastro, the Toronto Argonauts first yeah, round, round three, pick, pick 27. Was, uh, kind of a late riser in terms of the the scouting reports on him. Um, definitely once people he cut, caught people telling you the don't let Ben Laddick fall to 18 um, young well, 18 or 19 path for the caravan has been very similar to that of longtime Ottawa Red Black Antoine Pruneau started off as a corner moved to the boundary Skip said that's my dog ended up at the Sam tell Reddit congrats spot. so very versatile congrats player, plays at a, a high congrats level. to everybody that's um, been drafted so far I remember this day IQ last year who understands defense, stressful understands sort of the role of every player on awesome that defense a great leader a guy who has been a starter so, too many words to describe it but it was amazing it was an amazing day for me personally that U of M program um, a nice fit with uh, with the Hallett brothers as well in Winnipeg giving them some insulation some depth and the, the potential to start a Canadian defensive back should they choose to go that direction far huh yeah and you know for for Kyle Walters he was in a position to be patient because he got most of his Canadian content back from last year's Grey Cup team or from the 2019 team I should say so you know where do you improve in special teams is an area you could always look for depth pieces and that's where Cramdy really stands out Walters tells me this is the best special teams film that their coaching staff watched he's intense he runs around and hits people he plays as a high defender and fills in the run he's very versatile you mentioned the Hallett brothers Noah was taken at the first round of last year's draft so this adds to that the Bombers do play an all all-American secondary so they're not necessarily looking for anyone to start there but you never know how it's going to play out with injuries and depth as players eventually start to progress so uh, I think this really fills a need for them in terms of upgrading their special teams and giving them somebody who can be here now because you took Dobson in the first round who's going to be a futures guy you want someone in camp with your second round pick uh, you can't understate the fact that uh, you know the caravan are so good uh, he started there in the secondary from day one uh, and he is turn the film on he flies he flies around he can play multiple spots in the secondary he's not going to be a corner he's played some corner he's not going to play corner he can play some will possibly some sam uh, and then in, in the middle of the field as well but uh i agree with farhan day one this guy will be a demon on teams and if kyle walters is saying it's the best special teams film he's seen guys I, that means something because it means a lot to kyle walters and that team Retta Cramdy out of the University of Montreal, who is the second defensive back taken in the second round, the third overall so far in this draft. The other one's Alonzo Adida. Rough Riders are up. Nelson Where are my Rough Rider fans at in the chat? Second overall for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who are on the clock. They are coming up next with the second last pick of the second round. A look at uh, what they have done in uh, the second round. Farhan, Borsa? Uh, thoughts, expectations of what the Riders might do this Mountain Lions says, peace out, brother Stav. It's dinner well, time. Ooh, combo, who you're go BC Lions. He said, go BC Lions. Okay. First round pick. So you, you enjoy your dinner, Mountain Lion. Second round pick. And we talked about maybe a need along the defensive Making me line. hungry. You've got a guy like Mohamed Diallo who's still sitting out there. And really, there were only three legitimate defensive lines. I can see Borsa really going to the, to the Rough the Riders, staying home. Draft. And Staying in Regina. Up. He's sitting there and he's waiting right now. And there's been a lot of questions around him because he's looking to transfer to his fourth school, which is a red flag for a lot of people. But if you look at this guy's film, this guy's an amazing football player. And he always seems to show up on Saturday to play. So that could be a guy. Again, don't be afraid to take a future if you're the Riders right now. There's some future offensive linemen that are still out there and potentially him on the defensive side. Well, you mentioned Diallo and... and 
Not only is he a terrific player already at this point, but there's a massive upside with him considering this is a kid who didn't play football until after he had finished high school, went down and played junior college football in the States. But to me, one of the things I look at with this pick just has to do with the unique format of this draft, the snake format, is for these teams like Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, Hamilton, where you've been waiting for the longest time in between picks, and particularly when you look at Saskatchewan, because Hamilton had had picks at had Montreal's pick at the end of that first round. But you've had a lot of things change in terms of what you might have projected. Thank you, Dar. Thank you. you. I appreciate overall, it. And probably a lot of changes in terms of, of what your plan might have been as this draft unfolded. So it'll be interesting to see where things ultimately land. I'm so shocked as to the guys who haven't been picked yet, guys. And it's ha it hasn't happened overnight, but there's a new generation of, of talent in, in Canadian football and guys going down south, guys in U Sport. Uh, I think, I can't speak for you, Dwayne. Uh, we were picked the same uh, six in the first round, first round six overall. And there's about 40 guys in the draft this year that have been picked before me. Uh, this is just a new, for the old guys, the, the stay off my lawn guys who think that the game's not the same as it was back when we played. Well, you're right, it's not the same. They're a heck of a lot better than we were, and there's a lot of talent hmm. that hasn't been picked it's yet. true. I thought you were one of those it's guys, true. Chess. Stay off my lawn guy. <laughs> we are ready now for the second last pick of the uh, second round. And, uh, Borsa? Are we I'm thinking it's Borsa? Rough Riders on the clock. Let's hear it, Ran. With the 17th pick in the 2021 CFL draft, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders select Terrell Jaina, wide receiver. Oh, Terrell Jaina. Hamilton. To the Rough Riders. The Malcolm, you were wrong. That's the easy, uh, easy 20 earlier, bucks there. Perhaps even going as high as first overall, Dwayne, we really didn't know. Uh, but uh, talk about a receiver and one of very few uh, in this draft stock and ready to go into the CFL right now. Yeah, not not a deep receiver Congrats, class Terrell. at all. And, and that's one of the things that's that's interesting. 2 a.m. in Portugal. Ooh. Slide down a little bit here. I think he's a guy who, because he was such a highly regarded prospect when the rankings first came out in the fall, and a guy that teams were very aware of. He had a, a terrific junior season at Virginia, close to 80 catches in a very balanced offense. But his numbers came down a lot in his senior year. His, his combine numbers, his pro day numbers weren't eye-popping. And I feel almost as if being a highly regarded prospect at the start and people basically spending their time looking for, okay, what's wrong with him, as opposed to spending the time appreciating the things that he does very well, has hurt him a little bit in this draft. But should be a great fit in terms of what Saskatchewan has done in their All last right, Hamilton. drafts in terms of Who adding we, Canadian receivers taking and creating an opportunity for those guys to potentially play as starters, Farhan. Yeah, Craig Dickinson tells me that we think he comes in and competes right away for a starting job. Highly productive player at a big school, good hands, high character, and they see him in the slot. And that's a big thing because, you know, you talked about his 40 time in the four sixes at his pro day, and people thought about how he would benefit by getting the waggle and getting a chance to motion and build up some speed. And generally, Canadian receiver plays at that field side Z spot where you really don't get the benefit of the motion. If you give that to Jana, you know, now I think that's a real game changer for him. And it could be for Saskatchewan as well in terms of what they do with their ratio because we expected Justin McInnes to be penciled in at a starting receiver spot as well. So do they all of a sudden go with two Canadians in the receiving core and that maybe takes some pressure off what they're asked to do on the defensive side of the ball because we were talking about two in the secondary and one on the defensive line. So that gives them some flexibility. And you talk about character. Terrell Jana is a two-year captain and made a difference at the University of Virginia. You know, you talk about the racial unrest that happened a few years ago with the Charlottesville incident there. That was a university that was Leonard built from the Raptors. by slaves. Thomas Jefferson, who founded the school, was a, was a slave owner. And, and when Jana went to, to one of the memorials and he saw that a number of the people that had helped build that campus, they saw their first names, didn't see a last name. It really resonated with him. He played the entire season in 2020 without his name on his jersey because it mattered to him. This is the type of person we're talking about. He's going to do whatever it takes to be successful and to make those around him successful. Big-time pick by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Both their picks will be in camp. I had him as the best offensive playmaker in this draft. And I turned the film on and watched him work the slot. And you know what he reminded me of? Marque McDaniel, those of you who remember him, he was in Calgary, in Hamilton, great in the slot. He was impossible to guard because he was quick enough to, to get away from you, but he had a big lower body. He was strong uh, to get off. I and mean, he, look, Jenna can set DBs up. He's fast enough to 
um, but get away from coverage in regards to in regards to release off the line, in regards to timing. I, he's pro ready right now. The way he sets DBs up, the way he runs routes, is perfect for a slot receiver. And and yes, he's a he's a smaller guy, but lower body, a thick guy. Great pick. And yes, Dickie, I agree with you. Not only can he come and compete right away, I think he starts right away. A lot of people liking this pick. 17th overall, Terrell Jana going to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, we're showing you the first two rounds. There is one pick left in that opening round, and we end where we started with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Their third pick oh, yeah. of 18. They oh, baby. A tight end and a linebacker. Who's Who next? we getting? We'll be back. We're going on commercial break. We'll be back. second round and they have one more pick to go here to wrap up the second round. Who are we getting? Back I'm commission. telling you. Vladek, give him to us. With the 18th pick in the 2021 CFL draft, the Hamilton Tiger got select Dean Leonard, defensive Dean back, Leonard. Old Miss. Out of Old Miss. You're back. Ex Calgary guy. Let's go. In a stake draft, the Tiger Cats will choose first in the third oh, round. Oh, yeah. This is an interesting Bring them all to us. Too. Uh, interesting Bring them all to us. Wade and Kenton Leonard, who played with the Calgary Stampeders, his father. He, he won a Vanier Cup with the uh, Calgary Dinos before going off to Ole Miss. Yeah, and shout out to his dad, Kenton, who was a rookie with me in Calgary. I won't say what year because <laughs> it makes us both look way too old, Kenton. But he's a lot like his dad in terms of speed. Kenton was one of the fastest guys on our team. Another Dean smoke break. Sister, but much taller <laughs> than his dad at, at six foot two. Um, plays corner. Many youth sports coaches would tell you he's right there with Nelson Lacombo among the best youth sports defensive backs that people have seen. These guys are kind of a, a new breed, a new generation. And so Dean Leonard was a guy who, when youth sports canceled their season for 2020, had the opportunity recruited by a number of Division One schools to transfer down there. Oh yeah, that's right. Leonard's going back for another year. Uh, nice trying to go to the NFL. Twenty twenty, and I had seen that. Make a huge jump in in twenty twenty one, and we'll see where that takes him. But certainly a, a nice fit should he end up in Hamilton. And Sean Burke tells me they absolutely love his length. They love his athletic ability. He's all around the football, and they see him as a potential future starter. And when you look at Hamilton's draft so far, in their first round with two picks, they wound up getting two players that are going to go to camp. It makes sense for them to take a future pick here. 
You know that Leonard's going to go back to school. Also, Tavius Robinson, another U Sports player from Guelph, winds up going to Ole Miss as well. So both of them are there. Uh, Leonard's a former teammate of Eamon Ogbong Bamiga. The two of them played together at Notre Dame High School under Dave Deluzio in Calgary. So great bloodlines. He's got a lot of ability. He's projected to start next year. He had a very good spring ball. So what happens for him with his length and his measurables? Does he get an NFL opportunity? Because you have to believe that having that first year of SEC football under his belt next year, the sky's the limit. Now it's not going to intimidate him to play against guys like Devontae Smith and Kyle Pitts and John Mechie and the like. So his game could really take off. But if Hamilton gets him back, he's going to be a mainstay in that secondary. The answer is yes, he gets an NFL shot. We talked about his size. Watch him line up in press coverage. His, his arms are almost touching the ground. He's got long arms. He can run. Uh, yeah, he's fluid. He's going to get an NFL shot. Uh, and th if this is a guy who, when you're playing corner, he also could slide. If you watch him, how fluid he is, he could also play at the halfback spot. This uh, Leonard's a heck of a player, and I agree, adding with, with LaCombo. This is definitely the best DB class ever. We'll see how they turn out, but talent-wise, there's no doubt. And with LaCombo as well, two of the best uh, college guys coming out I've ever seen. And Leonard is, look, he played against Judy and Waddle, two top 10 picks in the NFL a week ago. So, yes, this is a, this is a great find for Sean Burke and the Cats. And a good draft so far for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, as mentioned, with three in the first 18. Through two rounds, a quick review before I get your final thoughts on what we've seen so far. Uh, Pierre-Olivier Lestage from the... Trevor Lawrence. Roberto! Trevor Lawrence, 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 Lawrence to the Jaguar. Trevor Lawrence to the Argonauts. Uh, going, uh, to <laughs> What's up, Roberto? The, uh, How's it going, man? Future pick, Bryce Bell, Sage Dockstader. Uh, Alonzo Adai to Ottawa. Grant McDonald to Edmonton. Alaric Jackson. Uh, Redek Cramdy to Winnipeg. Terrell Janna and uh, Dean Leonard. So, Farhan, quick thought on what we've seen so far in this draft. Well, I think a week ago when you talked to GMs, you got the sense there was going to be a lot of future picks early, and that didn't really happen in the first round of the level, I thought. We got three for sure that are going to be futures, one that's a possibility, and people have talked about, there was some hand-wringing that maybe this wasn't as talented a class because of the number of people that went back to school, deferred their draft year, took the extra year in the NCAA. It proved to be in the first two rounds, there's some quality football players, and next year's draft is going to be light so. <laughs> Yeah, I look at, at this class, and the, the thing that amazes me is when I start listing off the guys who haven't been picked yet, that, you know, I'm hopping on the draft tracker to, to see where some of these guys go because there is still so much talent left in this draft class, both in terms of some of those futures and guys who are going to make Canadian Football League rosters this year. Oh, we got guys flying off the board. Yeah, Muhammad Diallo did, the combo, to the Thai yeah, Cats. Let's go. Welcome, guys, buys, uh, buddy. D-Lyman 64305. And then to, to add to Bruno Blaine, LaBelle saying, to the Rough Riders yeah, out of Saskatchewan. So Woo. Players that could have went that haven't been chosen yet who could have went in the top top three, top five. Uh, I, I would be I wouldn't be too disappointed if I hadn't been selected yet. There's going to be some guys who are going to go in these next few rounds that we'll keep up with that will be big time players in this league. Yeah, uh, that wraps up our coverage through two rounds. But as Ches talked about, uh, the draft will continue. It's a six round draft this year. And very interesting so far. Of course, the big question still: Will the CFL be able to start again? On the I think that's it for the TSN coverage. They only cover the first two rounds. They should cover the whole draft, but hey, people are paying more money to see other stuff, I guess. All right, let's close this out. Now we just got the good old, we got the good old draft tracker, and we're gonna monitor it. As we go through this third round, Aaron Rodgers to Hamilton. <laughs> Thank you, Roberto. Thank you. The good old NCAA football days with Kalen. Oh, gosh. Those, those NCAA football days, I was goaded. I couldn't be beat. Now, 2K? Ooh. Don't. <laughs> I, was so, I used to get so mad losing to you in 2K. We have Patrice Rene out of North Carolina, defensive back. Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Let's see. I'm just trying to see if there's any other. I thought CFL.ca does like a live draft coverage, but maybe I'm wrong. With the 10th. Nope. Maybe they're maybe they're playing us this year. They're they're leaving it up to me maybe to do it. I'll do it. 
I'll do it. Ryan Skurd. Let's see. We got the BC Lions on the clock right now. Who are they going to select? We'll just have to wait and find out. We will just have to wait and find out. Let's get some music going. Let's, I mean, stop. Someone tell stop to ease the vibe here. Ease the vibe. Okay. We'll take that. A little background music. Never hurt anybody. Never hurt anybody. It's all it's all me. Nathaniel said it's all me. We got music going. I got a bunch of songs on here, don't worry. We got them all going. It's all on me. Who is BC going to pick? Who are they going to pick? I'm updating my computer as we speak. I'm trying to see. Who is it going to be? Last year they did like the CFL draft. I thought they moved it on to CFL CA after. Do they not do that anymore? Is that not in the, is that not in the budget anymore? It must not be. It must not be. Oh, well. I'm in the budget. I'm the budget. <laughs> I'm the budget now. We got lots of talent still out there. We got a lot of picks left. Any news about CFL, XFL negotiations? That's above my pay grade, unfortunately. And my pay grade isn't very high to begin with. <laughs> I do not know that. I was talking about that. Yeah, TSN only covers the first two rounds. For whatever reason that is, I mean, you got the greatest sport in Canada next to hockey, and we can't get the whole draft covered. Come on. Come on. Come on. I mean, let's let's not let's not BS around. TSN doesn't want to fork the money over to cover the full TF, full CFL draft. And it's showing. They got they got stuff going on on TSN left and right of you, you guys saw some, oh yes didn't see this but i saw it zoom miscommunications you got guys that are o linemen labeled as dbs i mean hey it couldn't be my stream it couldn't be mine i mean they i'm sure they they're hard working at tsn but i mean we're talking about the canadian football league the whole thing should be covered and it should be covered in the united states too no there isn't it's not on any of the other channels to my knowledge, I mean, I've checked before. Stop plays, stop plays is my, that's my gaming channel. Oh man. Okay, we just got Ben Hladek. Let's go, Ben. My boy out of UBC, 6'4", 235. The dude's a maniac. The dude is a maniac. You know what I'm gonna do? Ooh, we could get, I can start pulling up highlight tapes. Let me, let me see if my keyboard reaches this far. Then we can really get we could really get down to business. Give me one second, everybody. We could break out the highlight tapes and get real busy. You guys think I won't pull up tapes? We got we got highlight tapes. Holding. Here we go. Let's find those highlight tapes, y'all. We did this for the global draft. And you know what? By golly, we're going to do it again because we got a show. We got a show to put on. Let's go on the handy dandy Google. Ben Laddick. Football. I know Ben has highlights out there. I know he does. Where are they? Where are they? Yes, here they are, baby. Here they are. We got them. <laughs> and let's change this music. Can we get some? There we go.
Crank it up. Let's see it, man. Look, check the career stats. Oh, he's not in the... Bo Booyah. Hey, your boy was in that tape. That's me, number 18, running in there. There's me at the top of the screen, too. Shout out to Ben for putting me in his highlight tape. Let's see it, Ben. I remember this play. You got him. I was coming. I was coming. I was coming to help. <laughs> Let's see it, Ben. Oh, pick to the house? Crib it. Crib it. Crib it. Crib it. Crib it. I love it. Ben to the crib. Oh, yeah. Great highlights, Ben. Great highlights, Ben. I mean, we already knew it. They just didn't know it. They just didn't know it. Oh, we got Deontay Glover to the Edmonton football team. Running back, 5'10", out of Shepherd University. Connor Bergloff out of Saskatchewan. Let's see if we got any Deontay Glover highlights. We're going to do our best here. Google's back up. Deontay Glover. Come on, Deontay. Give me some highlights, Deontay. I need a few. I need a few. I just need a few. This is a bold statement, but his highlight video says, D2's best all-purpose player. Let's see it, Deontay. Oh, this dude looks fast. Oh, don't tell me he takes it to the crib. Woo! Oh my goodness! Where's my t where's my timer at? That's a four two. That's a four two at least. Wow! Congrats, Deontay Glover, on being drafted to the Edmonton football team. You know we're not going to be finding any O-line highlights out there. So don't make me do it. <laughs> we got... We'll, we'll see We'll see if we can find them. I'll see if I can find Connor Berglaw's highlight tape really quick. Connor... B-E-R-Glaw. About to find out right now. Connor, if you got a if you got a tape out there, I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay, we're gonna see if we got Villain or Luigi Villain out of Michigan, out of the big house, out of the big house. Only highlight, only high school. That's okay. Congrats to Luigi on being drafted to the Argos. We got the stamps up next. The stamps are up next and on the clock. Oh, I missed something. Something happened. Somebody donated another, another donation and I missed it. I just got to find where that tab is. <laughs> right there. <laughs> thanks again for donating another $5. Highlight tapes, thanks so much. You are the budget. I am the budget. Thank you for that do $5 donation again. I really appreciate that. That means a lot. We got Charlie Moore out of Calgary to the Stampeders. Staying home. Let's see if we have a highlight tape on us. 
You know we're gonna find it. We're gonna do everything we can to search the dark web to get there. <sighs> this is a this is a tough one to find. There's a lot of Charlie Moores out there. Here we go. That was my phone. I thought my water bottle just fell. That would have been dangerous. All right, let's see it. Mathena said, play some thugger. See ya. The TS TSA may not care about playing your highlights after the second round, but I do. I do. Charlie's got the close-up camera. The neck roll. Oh, the old-fashioned neck pad. The old-fashioned neck pad. Don't mess with those dudes. Let's see those hits, Charlie. Let's see them. Oh. Oh, oh. The strip. Bring him down. Oh, that's against UBC. I wasn't there then. Oh, he's fast. Woo! Woo! Play the wood. Oh, okay. I like it, Charlie. I like it. Congrats on being drafted to Stamps, man. That is awesome. We got Chris Fournier out of Lehigh to the Montreal Alouettes. Where's my boy Colt 45 show at? You just got an O-lineman, 6'4", 280. Let me see if we, if we got that. We're gonna, we're gonna find it if we can. Chris Fournier football, let's go. Do we got any, do we got any videos? I see Chris Fournier, American flag football. <laughs> I don't think we got any highlights on the O linemen on the hoggy, but we know they do work. They're the unsung heroes. O linemen are the unsung heroes. Nathaniel says Stavros is carrying the CFL. I got to. I want to have a job if we don't get more publicity out here. Come on. We need this game to grow. We need every household in America. To say, you know what, the NFL, yeah, that was cool, but check out the CFL. Way harder. Way better. Way more big plays. Way more big hits. Way more crazy close games. The Rouge alone, just, my goodness, do I even need to say anymore? We know what the CFL is about. Someone asked how many rounds there are. We're about to go in round four. I believe there's six rounds. Yeah, 54 picks. And we are currently... At the start of round four, the Owls are still on the clock. They're back. They, they're back again. You guys would laugh if you saw how I was sitting in front of my computer, <laughs> my keyboard on my lap. Oh, boy. But you know what? This is for the love of football. I love this sport. I love this game. I have a passion for it. And I also have a passion for sharing about it, so that's why we're here on video. Doing what nobody else is doing. We got Patrick Davis, another O lineman out of Syracuse, Colt 45. Come on. Tell him. Let me know. Let him know. Let's see if we can uh, pull those highlights up. We were able to find all the Global Guys highlights. Day or Patrick Davis, Patrick Davis, Patrick Davis. Shout out to my wife Kylie for putting up with me, <laughs> sitting in here for. We've been in here since what three forty-five, almost three hours. We've been sitting in here streaming this. Happy wife, happy life. I got to make sure I keep the house clean, or I'll, I'll end up underwater somehow. <laughs> 
Get to know your Syracuse Orange, man. Uh, that's from. This is from 2020. Is there, is there any video? That's from signing day. Steven Lango says you're rocking a buddy from Halifax. TSN, watch out. TSN, watch out. That's all I got to say. Give me a few more years. Let me establish myself as a pro athlete in the CFL. We might we might start our own broadcasting network. Get all the eyes on the CFL. There's a rouge in the indoor football league. I didn't know that. I thought I didn't I thought it just was no points. Sorry, Patrick, there are no highlights on you. And I'm not gonna do it to you and show you show your 2017 highlights. We can't do that to you. We cannot. I noticed we have about 70 people in here. I need to I need to see more from the chat. I'm sorry. I need to see more from the chat. Who your favorite team is. We need the rivalries just to flow. Oh, Elliot Graham, my boy out of UBC. To the Calgary Stampeders. Congrats, Elliot. Let's pull those highlights up. Elliot Graham. Football. UBC. I know Elliot doesn't have a highlight tape. I know Elliot does not have a highlight tape. <laughs> That's because I know Elliot. Let's see. This may be it. It's his virtual combine. We'll, we'll watch his virtual combine. Let's see Elliot's virtual combine. Big man. Crank up the, crank up the music. Oh. Woo. 6'3", 244. The big man. Ryan McLeod says riders. We're checking out Elliot right now. Stampeders draft pick. Big man. Big man. Elliot, come on. Come on, Elliot. Give us something. We don't need to see you standing on there. Let's see you rep the weight out. There we go. It's just too easy for him. It's just too easy for him. Let's see Elliot move laterally. Okay. Oh yeah. Change of direction. That's what we like to see. Congrats, Elliot. Happy for you, man. Super proud. You're doing it. You're doing it, man. We all are. Next up on the clock, we got the Argos. Who they're going with? I couldn't tell you. Josiah Joseph, what's up, man? Calgary quarterback. I know who you are. That was Wishart. Solid spot. Liam Wishart with the spot there. My boy Liam. Brody the... <laughs> oh, gosh. Josh Heyer. How do you know about Brody the Bull? <laughs> oh, boy. That was shown to me like my first year at UBC. Thanks, Jose. Star Wars, your live 2021 CFL draft is the best one to watch. Thanks, man. We may have to pull up some Brody the Bull highlights in between picks here. You guys have never seen a highlight tape like Brody the Bull. Matt Euler says, <laughs> Matt Euler says, <laughs> Matt Euler knows about it. Oh my goodness. I can't believe someone said Brody the Bull. That was, that, that was Brody the Bull-esque. What's up? Abd Abd <laughs> I can't even, I can't even speak right now because that is one of the funniest things. The Brody the Bull highlight tape after this next pick. We'll pull up the Brody the Bull highlight tape. I'll get it. I'll get it cooking. You guys will be dying laughing when you see this one. Oh, man. I, I, I see. I didn't know that many people knew about it, but it must be Canada wide. Everyone knows about Brody the Bull. Brody the Bull. Let's see. There it is. See, it's already YouTube's already known. I've watched this thing like 50 times. It has 15,000 views on YouTube. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. After the Argos pick, we'll, we'll watch that one. It's gonna go on and we're gonna play it. 
full volume, all the above. Brody the Bull, you guys are going to be in for a laugh here. You guys are in for what? You guys are in for a treat. You guys are in for a treat. Are the Argos going to select? I mean, they got the whole everyone who's not in the NFL on their roster. That refresh button. I mean, we could have watched all of Brody the Bull by now. In the lock, yeah, it's in the locker rooms across Western Canada. I don't know if they know about it on the East Coast, but everyone in Western Canada knows who Brody the Bull is. That's for sure. Oh man, I can't believe that. That that makes me laugh. I thought it was just a UBC thing. Like our special teams coaches showed it to us, and Coach Nell showed it. To us. I thought it was just. I thought he was sending it to UBC. I had no idea. Oh man. Brody the Bull is the strongest dude I've ever seen. I think he ran a 4442. <laughs> I think he did. The Argos are taking their sweet time. We're waiting for him. Brody's coming on. I'm just waiting for the Argos to pick because I don't want to I don't want to get in the way of that. Alejandro Benavidez asked me, do I play? Yes, I do play. I play for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I was drafted last year, 36 overall. And would you look at that? The Hamilton Tiger Cats have the 36th pick again this year. So whoever that is, I'm going to be a lucky, lucky man. I'm putting it on. I swear, I have Brody the Bull on my, my monitor here. And I have a monitor over there. That monitor is it's queued up. Brody the Bull. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to get... This is going to get out of hand. Start playing Brody the Bull highlights. 6'6", 334. You know what? The Argos are taking too long. We may as well just start watching some of it. Ugh, you guys are going to laugh. You're welcome. I'd love you to watch it. I'd love to hear back from you. Enjoy. Crank it up. This is Brody the Bull. For those of you that don't know. <laughs> oh boy. This is the next CFL great. The next CFL great right there. I got to keep tabs on the CFL draft tracker because we're, we don't need to watch this part. This is it right here. It gets better. It gets better as you watch it. <laughs> physical stats. That's how you know you're you're getting your physical stats measured properly. Five two one hand time. <laughs> oh boy. Look at this. He started it late. There's no way he runs that fast. There's just not a chance. Did you hear a beep? Did you hear a beep? You gotta, you gotta, no, you gotta All right, we gotta it. pause it, y'all. We got we we'll, we'll keep playing it, but we gotta pause it. We have a another person drafted safety out of McMaster, Tommy Neald, and a punter out of Eastern Michigan, Jake Julien. I'm pretty sure they have yeah first names yeah. All right, let's see. While we pause this Brody the Bull tape, we got we got to pull up. Let's see if we got any Tommy Neal highlights. Tommy Neal football. Come on, come on, Tommy. Give me something. Give me something. Tommy Neal, twenty eighteen. This will this will do. And Troy, we've been talking about him a lot. Sorry, I gotta mute it for copyright reasons in case he's got some crazy music in there. We'll play my music though. It's better. Let's see it, Tommy. Did I get this discount, this suit from Discount Rack at Moore's? No. 
I bet you wish I did, though. <laughs> when is the 10th team joining the CFL Atlantic Schooners? I think that was supposed to be this year, but it's on hold. Let's see it, Tommy. Ooh, Mostin. Tommy plays both ways, offense and defense? Or maybe they just got it mixed up. It looks like he's a receiver. Yeah, they probably, I mean, classic CFL, just marking it, marking him as a safety and he's a receiver. I'm pretty sure this is Calvin Klein. Better watch it, Tim. Yeah, tell someone, someone tell Tim to have some respect for my suit game. I got married in this suit, by the way, Tim. This thing has, this thing has some miles on it. Congrats to Tommy Neald. Jake Julian out of Eastern Michigan. Kickers are people too, but if you don't have a highlight tape, I can't help you. Let's see. Jake Julian. Football. Um, oh, Eastern Michigan, does he have a highlight tape? I don't have anything. All right, we're going to Dominic Johnson, QB out of Buffalo to the Edmonton Football Club. All right, here we go. Let's let's see it. Dominic Johnson Football Buffalo. I don't see I don't think we have any highlights on him either. I searched him. I searched him. We didn't have anything. Maybe maybe this has... No, it made me sign in just to view it. Don't worry, guys. We'll get, we'll get back to those Brody the Bull highlights very, very soon. We got the Argos taking Trevor Hoyt out of Carlton. Trevor Hoyt. Come on, Trevor. You're a linebacker. Here it is. I think. Here it is. Let's see it, Trevor. Matthew says one of the nicer suits I've seen. <laughs> Yeah, Montreal is going to get every single player out of the Montreal Carabins that they can. Oh, big hit. Let's go. This is Hoyt out of Carlton. Trevor Hoyt. He's got some. He, he's gonna. He's gonna make an impact for the Argos. I'll just wait. Oh, we got Robbie Lowe's out of Regina. <sighs> we got Robbie Lowe's out of Regina. Okay, let's see. Robbie. I mean, they didn't even put. Oh, wait, are you at like like U of R Regina? The Regina Rams? The Regina Rifles? The Regina. <laughs> oh man, I'm too funny. I'm I'm cracking myself up. Okay, Robbie Lowe's Regina. This is a one man crew. I might have to hire somebody. I'm gonna need a personal assistant. <laughs> okay, let's go video. Let's see. Here it is on Twitter. Oh, we got we just got one highlight. That's fine. Let's see it. Let's see that pick, Robbie. Oh, Manitoba. They love to throw picks. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Manitoba. If, if anyone in the Canada West plays defense, 
you know Manitoba. You're playing Manitoba. It's a bit, gonna be a field day. They just huck them up there for you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. They just throw them up there. Oh, oh man. Well, some shots, I guess. But all right, we got some time here while Sask is picking to check in on Brody the Bull and see how his training's been going. Oh, never mind. We don't. Elaine, give me a second. Give me a second. It's a little far away. Simon Kinda. I think I got it right. I hope I did. If I butchered name, I'm sorry. My name's been butchered all my life, so I guess I guess we're even. Um, oh man, I'm let's see if we got uh little Let's see if we got Elaine's highlight tape. It's not refreshing on this one, which is weird. But it's refreshing on my other one. Timberta said he can't be chirping my guy, Brody the Bull. <laughs> I'm a big chirper. I love to chirp. Teams are sleeping on Zach Fitzgerald. Zach is a baller. I got to catch up with the chat. Discount rack at Macy's. Fancy Pants California guy. Hey, I live in Idaho now, Tim. I'm an Idaho guy. North Idaho or die. Zach Fitzgerald, he's going to get picked up. Don't worry. Don't you guys worry. So mine isn't updating on this end. So I'll just bring this one over here. We got Elaine Simikanda. Simikinda. Sorry about that. Let's see it. Um, I'm just gonna start doing this. Control C. The good old fashioned copy and paste, and then you just type in football after their name, and we will see what we got. NFL prospect? DB? Didn't it just say oh I thought it said DB, it said linebacker. Does he have does he have any anything? Okay, there we go. Crank up the music stop. Oh, he's got four K he's got eight K on the quality. My dude's got thirty five ninety resolution. My goodness, the Manitoba slander. I like it. I like the I like the sax there, and I like the quality. Everyone in uh oh, we got Hamilton. Welcome, welcome, Jarek Richards out of St. Mary's, linebacker. Old well, Jarek, I'm gonna do you a favor and play your highlight tape. In front of the about hundreds or so people we have in here. Because you deserve it. This is your day. It's a big day. Jarek Richards DB. That's 2015. Where where did it say Jarek was from? St. Mary's. I don't see any St. Mary's highlight tapes. Let's type in St. Mary's. See what we get. Do we get anything? Halifax, Nova Scotia, 2019. Oh, we're going to Huddle. You know Huddle's about to hit us with an ad. Let's see if we can go to his, his profile. Ooh. This looks like the one. 43 time career highlights. My goodness. All right, we're waiting for the ad. Skip that. See ya. Someone tell me to get an ad blocker. SMU Huskies, let's see it. Ooh, special teams play right off the bat. Charlie Moore was a big steal of the draft, I would say, too. I agree with that. My goodness. Against Bishops? Poor Bishops, man. But Bishops doesn't even know what, what league they play in. Oh my goodness, going airborne. Bishops, I don't know if Bishops could beat the Halifax Highlanders. I don't know if he got that himself. I, I don't know. All right, that's Jarek. Oh, we got another. We finally got a Laval player. 
I don't think that's the first time I've ever seen a Laval player not go that quickly. Let's see. He's going to have a highlight tape. It's going to be with some French rap music. And I'm going to have to mute it, unfortunately. But we got to do what we got to do. Let's see it, Felix. Welcome to the team, man. Welcome to the team. I don't speak French, so I don't know how to welcome you properly. 2016, do we got a 2020? Oh, here it is. Wait a second. Wait a second. Here it is. Laval, they have the sickest camera crew. Laval has the sickest camera crew. I don't care what. If I had to do it all over again and I still got a Vanier Cup championship, which I would because I went to Laval, <laughs> I'd go to Laval. I mean, it's like going to a D1 college. Look at all those fans. Oh my goodness, he just crushed that dude. Look at Felix just coming over and hammering guys. See ya. I don't think there's been a Bishops player drafted in since uh, since Jamal Lee. Jamal Lee was probably the last Bishops player to be drafted. The GOAT. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. Get him down. Give us a safety. I like it. Congrats, Felix. Welcome to Hamilton. I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get to camp. Logan Bandy off the board. I know we got a bunch of Calgary guys in here. Logan Bandy. I know Logan probably doesn't have a highlight tape, but we're going to check anyways. Logan Bandy football. Meet the draft prospect, prospect profile. Come on, come on, Logan. We're not gonna pull up any 2016 Canada Cup highlights. All right, we don't got anything on Logan. So we are now, we are now on the Winnipeg pick. You mean Canadian French, exactly. Logan Bandy, the steal of the new steal of the draft. Congrats to Logan on getting drafted to the Rough Riders. Kyle Borsa to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I know he's got a tape. Dude is fast, a fast man. He could never run away from me, but that's. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he didn't run away from me on the football field, but it... let me. <laughs> okay, Kyle, congrats, man. All jokes aside, you're an athlete. We know it. You know it. The most explosive player in Canada. Four, three, eight, 40 yard dash. The most explosive man himself. Oops. We don't want Brody the Bully just yet. <laughs> Draft diamonds. Are the owls done? I'll have to check. I don't know if they're done. I think there's a few more picks. Let's get to the football tape. Do we have any football? Oh, this is his pro day tape. It's okay. There's a we know he's we know he's fast. Let's see him on the football field. This outrunning the Manitoba DBs. We know they're slow. Come on. <laughs> we know the Manitoba DBs aren't very fast. Look at Kyle. Outrunning everybody. Saskatchewan. Couldn't even keep up with him. More Toba slander. The poor Manitoba. I love Manitoba. That was always some of my favorite games to play. They got some good guys over there. Don't get me wrong. I'll I'll start slandering Calgary too. You think I'm you think I'm scared? Nobody nobody is safe. Oh, we got Alfred Green out of Wilford Laurier to the BC Lions. 
and Peter Cort Cortis. Hey, he's Greek. Gracias, Calispera. To the Edmonton Football Club out of St. Mary's. I heard he was a highly touted dude. Oh my goodness, the Colt 45 show, you're gonna love this. Montreal has pick 45. Oh, we got Treshawn Abraham Webster. My guy. My guy. My guy. I took Treshawn on a, he was, my, he was my recruit on the recruiting visit. I guess I didn't do good enough because he ended up going to Calgary, so. But we spent, we spent a lot of money when he was there. A lot of coach knows the money. I didn't get to take recruits out after that. <laughs> Treshawn and uh, I'm, yeah, yeah, Treshawn, yeah, you. I took you, Nick Cross, Keen Harley Mana. No, we got none of them. So I got, I got relegated real quickly from that. <laughs> Let's see if we could get some highlights from Alfred Green. Alfred Green. Football, baby. Come on, Alfred. How many Alfred Greens are out there? Not enough. Let's see it, Alfred. Okay, Alfred. <laughs> Let's see it. Big man. Oh, inside stunt? Booyah. Booyah. Big man. Let's see it. Out working the edge? I like it. I like this kid. He's just an athlete. Let's see one more. Oh yeah, take on the block. I mean, that's easy money. Those are easy money plays. Who do we got next? Who do we got next? Oh, they're just, I just can't even keep up. We got, let's see if we have uh, any Peter Cortis highlights. Cause we got to catch up here. Oh, he's got some, he's got a tape. Let's see it, Peter. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. Did someone order pancakes? Did somebody order pancakes? There's just pancakes everywhere. Aaron Rose says Pete is a dog. Great pick. Good kid. Peter K says Steven Langill. Peter is just. I mean, just flattening people. He's taking them out to Denny's All You Can Eat Pancakes. See ya. On the ground. <laughs> My goodness, Peter, congrats, man. I wish we could watch them all, but we just don't have the time, unfortunately. Keegan Mark Graf. We're going to show some long snapper highlights on here. Mark my words. Keegan Mark Graf. Keegan, you better have you better have some long snapping highlights on here, man. Ah, uh, he doesn't have any. Not any recent ones. That's okay. We got Chuba Hubbard to the Stampeders. Luther Hakanua Vanu out of York to the Stampeders. Back-to-back -back picks. You know what? we're going to play some Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard highlights. He's in the NFL, but hey, we're going to play some Chuba Hubbard highlights. Let's see it, Chuba. Leading rusher. Ads. Get the ads out. Get them out. And we got that Edmonton music. Okay. Am I in Canada or California? I'm actually in Idaho. I don't live in California anymore. I live in North Idaho. Coeur d'Alene. Chuba. I mean, we know Chuba's a baller since he's come out of uh, Edmonton. Shout out to my family in Edmonton. That's where the grassroots are. Ooh. 
see ya. Chuba's a track guy too. He's fast. Congrats, Chuba, on uh, on one being drafted to the Panthers. Huge, huge, huge success for you. And on being drafted to the Stamps, if you ever come this way. All right, I'm definitely copying and pasting this one. If you think I'm going to sit here and spell that name out, y'all are mistaken. Y'all are mistaken. Do we got anything? Do we got anything? 2016, 2016, 2016. Winnipeg Rifles. Let's pull them up. Who cares? Let's see it. Get the ads. Get them out. Get them out. We don't mess with ads. All right, Luther. Let's see what you got. Camera's defocusing on me. Okay, Luther. The wide receiver. I gotta text my wife my Chick-fil-A order, so everybody stand by. If you think I'm missing out on Chick-fil-A, just to give you guys some CFL draft content, you guys are out of your mind. I do not miss Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chuba's probably never leaving the NFL, but if he does, he's gonna go to Calgary. I gotta get nuggets. I gotta get a chicken sandwich. I gotta get, what else? I gotta get that Chick-fil-A sauce. Fries, and you know I need that Oreo milkshake. I had a good workout today, so I'm not I'm not I'm not worried about it. I burn calories like nothing. All right, we're in it. All right, enough is enough. Get Brody the Bull back up on here. We're not messing around anymore. Get him on the screen. Turn the music down, Stavros. Is Brody going to do anything, or are we just going to sit here and... Okay, Brody, I see you! Big jump! Come on, Brody! Get there! Oh, pants almost fell down. That's my favorite part. On the iPhone stopwatch? Shoot, I would have ran a 292. <laughs> Let's see it. Hand time pro shuttle? I've never seen a hand time or a laser time pro shuttle. That's an interesting one. The slow-mo. Oh, the extra zoom. Oh, here we go, guys. This is the best one. Look at the paper math. The paper math. They got the paper math bench press. Look, they got a microwave on the side. I mean. Four seconds the bench. Spotters have to stand over me as there is no room on the ends of the bar. You can see they are not pulling as the one hand. <laughs> Pinch grip only. I have done 475 with no one touching the bar. Currently working on 405. I feel like there should be more volume to this. Here we go. <laughs> All the weights we had in the house. Come on, Brody. Big push. Pinch spotting. <laughs> milk jugs on. Get the milk jugs out. Oh, boy. Racket. Racket, Brody. Racket. 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 Just wait till you see him ice skating. That's the best. They say, boys, the bar ain't bending. If bars ain't bending you're, just you're just pretending. The bar ain't bending. You're just pretending. Perfect form. All right, guys. That's that's enough of that one for now. We'll come back to that one. We got David Cote, kicker out of Laval, to the Alouettes, and they're back up again. Colt 45 show, 45 and 46. You, you lucked out. All right, let's see. David Cote football. Let's see it. Do we got anything, David? Do we got anything? Do kickers like feel the need to not make highlight tapes? Like, come on. We want to see them. Is this it right here? 110 verges. I don't speak French. Someone tell me what verges mean means. <laughs> we need to fast forward it. 
Turn the music back on. Can you turn the music back on, please? Goodness. Goodness. It's like pulling it's like pulling teeth. Oh, the handshake, the Laval handshake, we like it. We wanna see highlights though. Are they just walking down the field talking? Yeah, we'll just watch the watch the the clips that they show at the front. Yeah, Pierre Nicastro got drafted in the first round. Where have you been, RJ? RJ, someone get RJ out of here. First round, RJ. You're late. All right, we got some pictures. That's about it. That's all we had. I'm telling you, these kickers, they don't like to make highlight tapes. Okay, we got Ethan McConzo out of Montreal, a linebacker. Another, hey, defensive guy. There you go, Colt 45. Let's see, Ethan McConzo. McConzo. Conzo. Oops, spelled it wrong, but Google will figure it out. Here it is. Oh, he's got like it's the Quebec conference. They just get all the good hi like highlight tapes and everything. Let's see it. Sit back and relax. This is who you got, Colt 45. This is who you got right here. Ethan McConzo, a linebacker out of Montreal. All right, we need to see the highlight tape. Hopefully this isn't, okay. It, it's the, let's see it. Let's see it, Ethan, where are you at? I don't know where you're at, but I will, I'm guessing we're gonna find you. Make a play. Good night. See ya. See ya. Looks like a good pick to me too, Colt 45. You guys are gonna be happy with this one. The Montreal Carabins to the Montreal Alouettes. That's the new team. They're just going to get all the locals. Locals only. Locals only. Wow. All right. Congrats to Ethan on being drafted. We just had Josh Haggerty out of Saskatchewan. Also a former Team Canada guy. I know him. Tall, tall dude. I know he's got a highlight tape. He's got to. Here it is. 2015. 2019. Do we have something a little bit like. We'll just have to watch this one. <laughs> Can I full screen it? My goodness. Give it. Give us a chance. Let's see it, Josh. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, the Manitoba slander is going to continue, but how many people have picks against Manitoba? I guess this is just another one. Add him to the list, Josh. Oh, yeah, Josh. Nice pick, man. Good job, Josh. That oh, was a good pick. Oh, we got a Manitoba DB. I didn't know there was DBs in Manitoba still. I'm kidding, guys. Kidding. Shea Weeks, Manitoba. Football. Let's see that tape. Shea Weeks. Do we have a, oh, there it is. 2021 CFL draft prospect. Let's see it. Free. Trey Sean says free stats. How do you think I got 20 interceptions, Treshawn? You think that was all against everybody else? <laughs> I think 18 of them were against Manitoba. I think I had 18, 18 out of 20 interceptions were Manitoba. Josiah Joseph, I know, I'm, I know Shea Weeks is a baller. I was kidding on that one. I've seen him play. Shea Weeks is a DB baller. The poor Toba QBs. They just have a great time, though. That's what it's all about. I know Shea. I'm pretty sure Shea's picked off O'Connor, too. He's, he's a baller. Remember, I'm just... I'm, I'm joking, Slander. 
The speedy, the speed. Oh, don't tell me he takes this. Oh, on Calgary? This is on y'all's head. This is on y'all's head, Calgary. Where you at? That's on. Uh, I know Trey Sean wasn't on special teams. He doesn't play special teams. Oh shoot, we can't, we can't watch this one. We can't watch this one. Get it off the screen. Get it off the screen. No. Oh, it's okay. It's just a tackle. Oh, they're picking people left and right. We got Matthew Dirks to Del from Delaware State on lineman. You know he doesn't have a tape. And then we have Keenan Clark out of Cornell to the Edmonton football team. Let's see if Keenan's got a tape. Yeah, I know. I know, Trayshawn. I know you don't play special teams, man. You don't have to tell me. Keenan Clark. I don't think you... Cornell, maybe? Did I spell his name right? Keenan Clark. That doesn't look like we have anything. That's fine. You know what? Not everybody has a tape. Not everybody has a tape. Oh, the Calgary guys. Y'all are too funny. Y'all are too funny. Too many heartbreaks. Too many heartbreaks for me. But I got my ring, so I'm not complaining. So did you guys, but I got mine first. <laughs> I got mine first. Against, let's put it this way, probably statistically historically probably one of the best calgary teams out there i mean you had buckley simon eyes timis you guys had them all you guys had them all but hey that's not what we're worried about okay we got a little break right now cfl needs to cut you a check for this stream this is tough Ch charles you know they do we're gonna run it up we're gonna run it up that's for sure okay let's get uh Let's get Brody the Bull back on screen because I can't entertain forever, so I got to use other people. <laughs> and here we go, Brody. Your spotlight is there. Brody's going to... Brody's about to send me a cease and desist. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You're supposed to measure from the back toe, Brody, not the front, but that's okay. My first time trying this did 25 inches. Should be able to do more with practice. Measure the toe. Oh, inside the science class? In science class. Big man. Oh, here we go. This is the best. This is the best. Hockey. Brody the Bull hockey. You guys got You guys are gonna <laughs> look at him just carving it up. Look at that. Speeding. Speed skating. Look at him, just carving it up. That's a, that's an athlete right there. The public skate, the ripped jeans and the jorts. Man, poor Brody. I wonder what he's up to now. Is he still in Japan doing the sumo wrestling? We'll never know. Let's see. All right, all right, all right, Brody. Get out of here, buddy. Hey, we got Tyler Packer out of Calgary to the BC Lions. Congrats on my Calgary guys out there. That, that's generational talent. <laughs> generational talent. We got three more picks here, y'all. And the draft will officially be over. We got the Argos, the Rough Riders, and my team, the Tiger Cats, at the end. Yeah, that, 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 that was a troll, Nicholas. That was a troll. That video is old. I think it's from, I'll, I'll, I'll date, I'll, I'll fact check it for you right now. January 14th, 2014. That was before I came to UBC. Okay, we got Benjamin St. Juste out of Minnesota. He's obviously in the NFL. He might never come to the CFL either, but hey, why not? Why not show his tape? I've seen it. He's a baller. He is on the Washington football team. I'm surprised the Edmonton football team didn't draft him. All right, here we go. We got... I didn't even type in Saint. I'm, I'm an idiot. Uh, top nine plays Minnesota's. Come on, Stav.
Do we have anything? Anything at all? This looks like something. Here it is. Is that the highlight? That's all we got was a push out of bounds? Come on, Ben. Give us something. Okay, tackle. I like it. I like it. Brody the Bull is generational talent. His kids are going to be in the NFL. You mark my words. Packers the is the best Warzone player on the Lions. Okay. I'm going to let you know I'm the best Rocket League player in the CFL. Hands down. And probably the best Nuketown player. Hands down. Has anyone in the CFL in, nu in Nuketown? Dropped 110 kills. Probably not. Probably not. But I have. What do you got to say to that? What do you got to say to that? Nobody's got anything to say to that. You want to know why? Because they couldn't handle me on the on the Xbox. I mean, I'm a, I'm a mouse and keyboard type of guy. Treshawn says 2.5 KD. That's what they all say. I'm a rusher. I rush. I get, to, I get to work. I go like my best game 109. And I think I died like 20 times. I got like three chopper gunners, three AC 130s. My literal kill streak class is AC 130. All right, it's helicopter, tack helicopter, chopper gunner, AC 130. I get them every game. It's it's just like it's it just happens. It's too easy. Like if I don't get it, you'll you'll think I had an off game. All right, y'all, we're finishing up the draft. We got the Rough Riders and the Tiger Cats. Last two are going to pick. Those stats show up in the highlight tape soon. Very soon. You don't think I'm going to be putting my Warzone stats in my LinkedIn bio after I'm done with the football? You're wrong. We got Matt Watson out of Mount Allison. Mount A. Let's check out Matt's highlight tape. Congrats, Matt, on being drafted. Oops, I just typed in Matt Allison. We're going to get 100 Matt Allison hits. Come on, Matt. Uh, you better have a. You better have something for me. Matt Allison football mount A. There it is. Come on, Matt. Where's your tape at? Here it is. Let's see it, Matt. I'm a sweat, Matt. Yeah, I'm a sweat, Matt. <laughs> They're playing in the fog out there. This almost got the, the smoke machines out there. Congrats, Matt. Oh, pick. Take it to the house, Matt. Take it to the house. Stud on him. He didn't take it to the house. If that clip is... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's enough of that. If that clip, if you ever see a DB with a clip and they look like they got a pick six, but they cut it off, it means they got caught. That's what it means. Trust me. I've, I've done it before. I've done it before. I've been that dude before. I'm not playing. But I'm standing up for the final pick here. We got the final pick of the 2021 CFL draft. The Hamilton Tiger Cats. Who are we going to get? We don't know, but we're going to get somebody. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the stream thus far. It's been a great day. 65 people in here, over 1,400 playbacks so far. I mean, we're doing our job at the end of the day. We provided content. That was the goal. Provide some content. Haven't had a lot of football stuff going on over the past year. So, hey, someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to take one for the team. Highlight said 203. CFL said 177. <laughs> well, I hope he's in between at least. I hope he's in between. Hey, we got Miles Manalo, a linebacker out of Western. Miles is actually, we've, we've spoken a few times. We're going to pull up his tape. Congrats, Miles. Welcome to the hammer. Let's pull up his tape. Last highlight tape of the day. We should watch my highlight tape to end it all off, but y'all don't want to see that. 
Let me know in the chat. Y'all want y'all want to see? Y'all want to see? Oh, Jose, that's your son. Congrats, Jose. Congrats, man. I know that must be a, a super proud father moment right there. See your son get drafted. Here are his tapes. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, Jose. This is for your son, man. There it is. There it is. Congrats, Miles. Congrats, Jose, on your son getting drafted. And just like that, that's the CFL draft, y'all. We did it. There were some technical difficulties, obviously, to start. I thought I was going to be able to stream it. Canada said this time. This year, they said, you know what, Stop. We watched your stream last year. You're not getting away with it this year. So my VPN blocker didn't work. I'll have to figure out what, what I can do next year. But we'll, we'll make sure that we get the video next year somehow. But again, thank you all for watching. Congrats to all the draftees that have been drafted. Hopefully we get to start the 2021 season very, very soon. I'm super excited. I've been training hard. I know all of you have as well. Again, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for all that have donated to the stream. And we'll see you in my next video. Have a good one. Have a great weekend. Have a great rest of your month. Happy May the 4th. May the force be with you.